Hi friends, Tiffany here. Welcome to my quilting life. If you are new to my channel, head down there. Hit that subscribe button. It could be on this side, but I'm pretty sure it's on that side. <laughs> Don't forget to like my videos and share them with your friends. So, this is a day in the life of my being in my quilting room. A day in my quilting room. Today is the 1st of December, and I felt like sharing with you my life as I come into my quilting room because I'm in here off and on throughout the day but instead of like taking a selfie stick like most people vlog and just following myself around all day long I just figured it's only important if we're in my quilting room <laughs> so <laughs> today is just a day in the life and if it goes well and you guys like the videos of a day in my life I will continue to do as many a day in my life as I possibly can as well as my so Sundays as well as my insomniac quilting series and as well as whatever else I randomly do when I do it why because I'm not a schedule type person I just do whatever whenever I feel like doing it when I walk in this room I have no thoughts of exactly what I'm gonna do I look around and I think to myself I could do this mm, and then I pull it out and I'm like ah, I don't want to do that and then I think I'm gonna do something else and then I'm like ah, I don't want to do that it's severely crazy in my head <laughs> but today I figured I would just get everything cleaned up my ironing board has had so much not on there now but my ironing board has had so many projects just stacking up saying finish me finish me so that's pretty much what today is is coming and in order of the way I had finished them like I quilted the um tuxedo stars and it needed binding so in order to of things and then i was working on my string blocks which is today right now it's it's, it's going to be into play but i did the binding for that that's done and out of the way don't need to worry about it now is the string blocks they've become an obsession <laughs> which i do it all the time but now i'm like in that mode where i'm really going to finish it so Let's see who's here. We got Kim, we got Jim, we got June, uh, we got Judy, Kathleen, Vicky, Ken. That's it. Yeah. I do the same. I, if I don't finish it, who knows when and where. <laughs> yes, exactly. Hi, Gwen. So, welcome back, everybody, to video two of A Day in the Life of My Quilting Room, or A Day in My Quilting Room. I forgot what I typed already. Maybe I'll get it correct by seeing A Day in My Quilting Room. That's what it is. A Day in My Quilting Room. <laughs> <laughs> so this is video two now I'm going to work on strings quilts what I'm going to do for all of you most of it's been used up so I'm just going to show you you know that I for a couple so Sundays actually more than a couple I just sew. so I've been making string blocks right these are all the up and down ones and then I made diagonal ones those have already all been used so recap in total I had made 90 of these and I said I'm done <laughs> and then I made I made so on so Sunday I had made a few more of the on the diagonal ones which I had paper pieced so or I foundation paper piece so they were going in this direction up and down um, on the diagonal and then I was like I was at 56 or something like that on Sunday I don't remember the number so I decided yesterday to finish making some blocks. I got to 60 and I said, ah, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I really did say that in my head. I'm like, I'm done. Okay. So I got to 60 and decided, well, how about in between me making them, I just put them together and then show everyone how to put them together. But then I went overboard and put them all together. So I'm going to... Um, turn the camera on a second and show you guys what I am at and then I will come up close and explain to you how I put them together and why I put them together this way because it looks so awesome and I would show you a picture but I kind of can't because we're on my cell phone which has the picture on it so um uh, let me see before I stand up everyone's still saying hi everyone's still saying hi okay uh, Shirley's here. All right, so I'm going to move that out of the way and, and then I'm going to put the camera somewhere and 
somewhere. <laughs> and hold what I can up so that you can see what I have done and what I have created out of my string blocks. Now remember, this is the ultimate string quilt. Literally all strings. So let's turn this camera and turn the camera. There we go. So now you can see my room is a mess. Here we go. Let's find an end. I got to be careful holding this up because I did not stitch around the whole entire edge. This is all the edges are pretty much bias seam. So the less I hold it, the better. But to give you guys the general idea of what I have created. Can you see that? My ultimate strings quilt. So it starts off diagonal. Then it goes to straight up and downs, but they're turned. And then diagonal again. And then straight up and down and then diagonal again. So it's five across and it is six down. And I'll show you what I mean by five across and six down in like two seconds. Just trying to hold it up so you can see my ultimate strings quilt. Right now it is 70 by 84. That's just so far. So let's bring this up close and show you what I am talking about and how I put it together. Remember I already said in earlier video, and I'll say it again in this video, the camera is going to be moving around a lot. All right, so let's find some blocks. All right, so here is, I'm gonna just show one. So here was one, what I'm talking about, I foundation paper pieced these on the diagonal, okay? Then I put four of them together, facing all in to create a square, okay? And then I pieced four patches. So I made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I made 15 nine patches, I think. Yeah, 15, I mean 15 four patches. Where did I get nine from? I don't know. To create these. And then when I put the strings together that were up and down, I put them together in four patches like this. Let's see if I can't hold that just right. So one goes up and down, one goes side to side, one goes side to side, and one goes up and down to create like a pinwheel of straightness in the center. Can you see that? And then I made them all exactly the same. So I made the four patches of these exactly the same. Obviously all the strings are different, but I made them all come into making a square. And then all of these, it started with one facing this way and then the next one faced this way and then that way and that way to create that pinwheel. I did them all in the same direction purposely to get the illusion that these are popping out, okay? So I made 60 total of my diagonals like this. And then I used 60 of my 90 of these. So that's 120 string blocks <laughs> to create. Again, I'm trying to be careful holding this as, as it is right now to create this. So, so many strings, so many different colors. That's beautiful. So many, so many strings. Ultimate strings, let me tell you. <laughs> lots and lots of strings. Again, it turned out 70 by 90. So there's four, five rows, one, two, three, four, five, by six rows. So I hooked five of them together and made six rows of five of these together. And they alternate. So one row started with these. Then the next piece was those, and then the next piece was these, and the next piece was those, and then ended with these. Get it? I'm so silly, right? <laughs> so now I want it to be bigger. It is 70 by 84. How big is each block, okay. Kim asks? Oh, they're 14. Hold on. When you put all four together, they started out as seven and a half inch blocks, and they are 14 inches after taking the seam. So these were 14 inches with four together and these are 14 inches with four together. So in turn makes a 70 by 84. But to continue on with the ultimate strings, I geniusly thought of what about 
not making any more strings and taking these strings because there's still quite a bit of them left <clears throat> and ultimately chopping these all in half because these are seven and a half inch squares here so i'm going to be chopping them in half this way so that's three and three quarters over and i am going to add black borders on each side to because black is probably the best color to bring out all this color i mean there is some black in here but it's mostly all color so to bring it all out i'm going to use black as my first border then i'm going to chop these up and attach them end to end to end to end to end to end to end, to end, to end until i have a really humongous long long piece and if i have to add more i probably will have to add a couple more strings i will add more and then put black up on the outside of that and then top it off so that this is queen size to have because those three borders if i cut two and a half inch black and then put this at three and three quarter and then another two and a half inch i'm gonna have two three four five six seven eight about eight and a quarter inches of border and then i'm gonna add another random fabric in here that i have plenty of yardage and I'm going to add the most randomest fabric because all this is so random that I'm kind of thinking I don't want to choose something pretty. I want to choose one of my most randomest fabrics and do an outer border and finish it off to where it'll end up 90 by 98 or something. You know, it'll be a queen size for sure because I have a queen size bed and where not to put this? Well, it, it, it's not going anywhere but my bed because this is the ultimate string quilt and there is a lot of time in this <laughs> a lot of time so jim says sounds like a plan to me so here it is again holding some of it up because it's so awesome ultimate strings so many strings lots of color so beautiful throw it over there and we're going to start by chopping all these up and hooking them and to end to end to end and i'm going to chop them this first is a tiff. that's a lot of strings and so gorgeous i know and that's why i stopped at 60 because then i would like totally keep going and i would have had 90 and then this thing would have been too big to add borders to and i'm like thinking to myself just stop tiffany Joyce just says stop. it's beautiful <laughs> kathleen says i dig it so we're going to back Pieces you guys up movement between the other and we're going to keep you right here because what we're going to do is take my black. No, we're going to do these first. Screw the black. And you got cools and very nice. We're just going to take these and we're going to split every single one of them up to three and three quarters. So we're going to be here cutting for just a little while. All right. Let's see. One, two, three and three quarters. Wow. That seems like almost four inches. <laughs> Get it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm so silly. I know. All right, three and three quarters. Oh well. Kathleen says you're looking at the quilt so far. The movement, the FP. And I'm gives it. going I'm crazy, to... wondering what a color scheme would do. Oh my yeah, ideas. Yeah, right. <laughs> if they were all in like specific colors, that would be so awesome. One, two, three, and three quarters. So I'm just going to go ahead and make two different piles, splitting these all in half because I don't want the same four or five or six pieces in a row continuously. I'm just gonna make two piles. That way, everything gets mixed and matched up very nicely. So we're just gonna continuously cut these, and I'm cutting them in half this way. Remember, I had 90 of these originally, and I only used 60. So that gives me quite a bit to chop up and go all the way around the quilt. Kim Perfectly. has a friend in Denver that loves her string quilt, so she's thinking of making her one just like this. Yeah, she's this, a breast cancer. This survivor. is definitely a fun way to put all the strings together. And once these borders are on, I have a feeling I will never part with this quilt because this thing is awesome. I definitely love scrappy. I love um, all the different fabrics. This is so many of the quilts that I have made as well as scraps that I have gotten from people and scraps that I have gotten from purchasing and so on. And everything was chopped all up for me to have fun with. Do you need water or anything? No, I have water. Okay. So I'm just gonna continuously cut these and we'll chit chat while I cut these. So while we're here, I'll ask the question, what do you guys think about me doing a day in my life here and there? 
not just today, but making it more than one video and more more than two videos, whatever. Just as many videos as I could possibly make. But they're more like vlogging of me trying to finish projects in my room. You know. Actually, I could probably cut two at a time because technically... Are the strips all the same width? Yes, they are all... No, no. The strips in these are not the same width. Some are one and a half, some are two, one and three quarters. Um, they're all different. They're all different sizes. So some had six, some had five. They're all different. Just like the ones that are in the actual quilt top so far. Um, they're all different. And when the strips themselves are different sizes, but she cut them so the blocks were all the same. Yeah. The strips are all different. Yeah, they're all different. Some had five strips, some had six, some have seven in them. Some are really thin, some are not. You know, it was a just a mixture of me doing it. The day I was doing a ton of them on video, I was doing one and a half inch strips because I had a whole entire pile of them, and I figured it'd be easier to just cut a whole t entire pile of um, strings and just do them all the same size that day. But they're actually all different. None of them are the same. Heather Which is gave what... you a thumbs up, and Kim says she thinks it's a great idea. Yeah. And Lisa says it sounds like fun. You should go for it, Tiffany. Yeah. Well, I figured you guys want to know what I do every day when I do come in here. It would only be me turning the camera on as I come in here. Instead of making a video, an actual vlog video like some people do, I figured I could just go live each time and give you guys a chance to see me more often, even if I'm just sitting here telling you what I did that day because sometimes I don't actually have something to do or I don't feel like it or I'm just not you know feeling too well or something like that so not every video will be me showing you something but as many as I can will be so yeah and then I'm just going to ch chain piece all these together once I have all this cut into three and three quarter inches in two piles. This should be plenty to go all the way around this quilt four times, or four sides. Hopefully I won't have to add any more, but if I do, we will. Almost Arlene says done. she loves your random visits and I love your scrappy quilt. Scrappy quilts are my favorite. Yes, <laughs> mine too. I like scrappy. And then I also like <clears throat> controlled scrappy. I like the fabrics to be controlled in all the same colorways but scrapping them up and moving them around so that they don't look exact um i definitely like controlled scrappy too i don't always line my fabrics up properly so i like to have fun with it after all it is just fabric so we're having fun with what we have all right so now these are all cut and now we're just going to flip one upside down and hook this to this over and over again. And we're going to come over to the machine and you guys are going to watch me continuously chain piece. <laughs> Aren't you going to hook black around it then? Yeah, but I have to cut the black. So okay. do you want to see me or do you want to watch the machine? Let me know now before I put this thing down. Oh, and uh, now I already forgot who said it. She was posted. Heather posted. See, that's my stand. See this? The neck, the head of it, this part broke off, so there's duct tape holding it. I have one, but it doesn't stay, as you can tell. One movement moves the whole thing, so I do have one of those. Well, Pat says I love it. January first, <gasps> oh, I'm going out. to start one. Thank you for sharing. All right, here we go. We're just going to take you guys over to the sewing machine, and you're going to get says, oh, I see. a chain piecing experience of the over and over and over and over again. <laughs> When everybody says online that they're chain piecing, this is what they're doing. Continuously hooking piece to piece to piece to piece to piece and not wasting thread. And I'm using black thread instead of white. Actually, I should use white on this, but I'm not going to. Well, We're Pat, that can be your New Year's resolution. You can make one of these quilts. So I'm just going <laughs> to right size together and I'm going to use black thread because it's already in there. And I could care less because I'm using black. Um, I will be using black border fabric anyway soon. So... And I do want to change that stitch length. Give me two seconds to rerun over that. That's a very, very, very loose. There we go. Very loose stitch length. So I'm going to hook one after the other. After, ooh, that's the same color there. Let's put this one there. 
So I'm just lining them up and we're going to chain piece all of these through. And notice I have my seam guide. The seam guide is lined up at that quarter inch. See that line right there that it's next to? That's the quarter inch line. Mary says, I need to shave my legs. The hair is bugging me, sliding on my pants. Just saying. <laughs> I don't shave my legs. There's a fun fact for you guys. I've, I hate shaving my legs. I don't think it's necessary, honestly. I mean, sometimes I do in the summertime if I'm going to go out, but I don't ever even go to the lake you, anymore you and hang out with friends. So, <laughs> And I have very little hair on my legs. If I showed you, you guys would have been like jealous when you were in your early 20s and stuff and be like, what, you only have that much hair on your legs all your life? Yep. So there's no point in shaving them. <laughs> I got lucky. I wasn't a very hairy person growing up. I didn't have thick hair like my sister and my mom. Well, she says she shaves them less and less in the winter. <laughs> yeah, I don't That's even less bother. She doesn't shave hers at all. In yeah, I have the no shave November family members. <laughs> she says I'm just going to use the strings I already have cut, all colors and sizes. Yep, just like this. These were already cut, too. I didn't have to cut anything extra. She was doing free motion quilting. Oh. And her pretty loud. Well, I'm glad you're here now. I'm, I've made it go on a half an hour early, but I didn't even get my own notification, which was kind of weird, even though I scheduled this live chat at 4.30. So, no, at 3.30, so that it would come on at 4. Like I said, I would give you guys a half an hour notice as best as I can. And yeah, my own device didn't even get my own notification like it usually does. So I think something was wrong with it today. What, uh, what cut size are your blocks now? Now they are three, three quarter inch by seven and a half inch. And I'm just continuously hooking them together. So I probably have more than I need in a row. We'll see. I'm going to be cutting things down anyway when I start making the borders. Here's one example of one of the pieces. See how thin that one is? And then some of them are thicker. So they were just strings hooked together in all different widths. Not too wide, though. They weren't like... They weren't bigger than two inches. June says she only shaves to the knee in the summer. <laughs> yeah. She just loves to work along with you. Awesome. It's like having a friend here sewing with her. Yeah, that's why I like having live chats. This, okay, so I'm going to explain this again for those that are new to my channel. I only do live chats lately because I feel, personally, the communication back and forth between me and you guys during a live is 10 times better than 500 comments of the same exact thing on the same exact video. That is why I prefer live stream because you can ask it right now. I tell you right now and nobody has to ask again later, you know, unless you didn't catch it or something, you know. Plus, I like hanging out with you guys it's like you're here with me that's the reason why I, I had the did the quilt for my birthday last year because I 100% love having you guys here with me and live chat is the only way to have you guys here with me in a virtual kind of way so that is why I do live chat and not anything else right now I prefer it I prefer the closeness with my friends So I'm just chain piecing all these through, and then I'm going to take them apart and chain piece sets of two to sets of two, and so on and so forth. You're doing good. Yep. It'll get done pretty quick. It shouldn't take too long to make these borders. And then I'm going to continuously hook it all to the black fabric as well, which you guys will see, because my corner... Hi, everyone. Hi, Tiffany. I thought I missed you tonight. Oh, no, nope, didn't Patty, miss me. <laughs> I'll probably have another live again later, too, after this one. Because I had I lunch, and I had myself a ham sandwich and some carrots. I like eating baby carrots. And then string cheese. 
that was my lunch. And then Scott keeps trying to give me a yoo-hoo. Yeah. <laughs> One day Scott, what movie was it? We were watching a movie because nice Scott, guys. yeah, we were watching Russell the nice Crow guys. And, uh, and they drink yoo-hoo in the movie. And Scott goes, I want yoo-hoo. <laughs> so it's like, I don't know, 10 o'clock at night. And he's like, I'm going to go get yoo-hoo. I'm going to go get yoo-hoo. He never went and got it. It was before 10 o'clock. It was 10 o'clock is when I gave up. Oh. Because you didn't want me to. Either way, he kept saying, I want yoo-hoo. I want yoo-hoo. <laughs> Fine, I'm not going to go get it. And then a couple days later, he goes and he gets yoo-hoo. And he's here. He got yoo-hoo enough for me and him and CJ to have three yoo-hoos each. <laughs> And he's drinking his all up like crazy, and I'm like thinking to myself, I haven't had a yoo-hoo since I was like, I don't know, 15 years old or less. <laughs> Same here, that's why I got them. <laughs> they don't taste like I thought they did. I thought they tasted different when I was a kid. But then does anything ever taste different once you become an adult? I mean, or the same as when it did when you were a kid? No, it doesn't. Everything tastes different once you grow up. So now he's drinking all his, and I've only drank one of mine, so I have two left to drink. And if I don't hurry and drink mine, he will drink them. Because <laughs> he, he's, no, he's you who obsessed. He's you who obsessed now. He, he's on a roll with the you who. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Heather That's... says, I would rather hang out with you to spend money. Right? All right. So here we go. All these are now connected, so I'm going to grab a little break them apart or thing. Take you guys over to it so you can see how fast this goes and you can watch Scott's arms while we're in the process. My arms? Yeah, because that's what you can see on the camera. Your arms. Okay. Um, so don't don't go scratching your butt or I'm picking your nose. My or my nose. <laughs> anyway, um, I was going to say, what was I going to say? I have no idea. Anyway. Patty says she's been busy lately. Real life is hard. Can we just be self-funded and play with fabric? Yes. <laughs> right? Tip would love that. Yeah. Um, here is my question of the video. And if you're watching the replay, you can answer it there. If you see something on a movie, like they're eating Taco Bell, or they're eating a big, huge steak, or they're eating this, or they're eating that, do you crave it? And go out and buy it, or do you just say, oh, that looks good, and then walk away, walk away? <laughs> what do you do when you see food in a movie? Do you go get it, or do you ignore that craving? Mary says, no, we go get it. <laughs> I want to hear these answers, so read them out, read them out loud. That's the only one you got so far. It's like are they, if they're chewing, even if they're chewing gum, like they pull out their pack of dentine gum or they pull out, what are those things called that I used to like? Those uh, mint things? Mentos. Um, Mentos. Pull out their Mentos from their pocket and pop in their mouth. Does it make you want to go get some Mentos? <laughs> All right, Kai, let's, let's keep going. Um and it says we don't pick our nose in public. She was talking back to me when you were talking about my arm. <laughs> <laughs> I crave it. Sometimes drool, but stay home and get something from my fridge. <laughs> that's us. Yeah, that's us. We talk about it. Although every game, time I see drool. Panda Express in a movie, it takes about a month, but for like a month I'll crave Panda Express and finally we have the money because we are broke. Finally, I can have my Panda Express. But the only thing is, is only I get it. Scott doesn't get it because it's like eight dollars for a plate. I we can't even. $8. We wish it was eight dollars. It's like what is it now? Nine something? It's nine sixty or something? Tax, yeah, for a plate for one person. So we're like, no, we'll just get it for Tiffy only, and I'll eat whatever. <laughs> There's a local taco shop that has sucked my son in with their ads. So. <laughs> We are having it for supper. I get that with TV commercials, but there's a commercial for something, I want it. Way, but sometimes I will go get it. Last time a craving was filled, it was an Olive Garden date Ooh, with her husband. Ooh, we don't have Olive Garden here, but I see the commercials all the time on TV. Well, not on TV, on the Roku slash on YouTube, how it has yeah. commercials and stuff. I don't actually see it on a TV. Well, it's on the TV technically, but... Jim says, if I, if I didn't have it, I'll grab something else. If, <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
I, I love seeing the commercials. It makes me crave it. And then I'm like, ah. Becky says the doors are an hour drive away, so she doesn't go get it. Ah, <laughs> oh, that sucks. Well, I guess you save money living out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you do. Especially if you're definitely craving something from the TV. When I first met you, you... Have me go to was it AM PM? No, Circle K. Circle we don't K, we don't yeah. have AM PM. Yeah. Yes, we do have an AM. We have an AM PM, but it's not on this side of town. Tim said one night I saw so many ads for Red Robin burgers I was ready to lick the screen. I abstained <laughs> from it though. <laughs> yeah, we just went to Red Robin last week for our um eight year dating anniversary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we celebrate our marriage. Red Robin for Yeah, dating. we celebrate marriage and dating anniversary. How many of you do that? Those of you who are married and or in relationships or whatever, do you celebrate anniversaries for everything? Jim hardly watches TV, so commercials on YouTube are not food related. Mine most are. Commercial. Everybody's commercials says, on YouTube are different. He says most Lately, my commercials have been weight loss. I'm like thinking, I don't need to lose weight, so why am I getting... I never haven't even looked up weight loss stuff, so I don't know why I'm getting weight loss commercials. It usually goes by what you've looked up, you know, like... Or ads that you've clicked on or seen or something like that. Brenda's just getting here. She wants to know what Hi, Brenda. I am piecing together my ultimate strings burger. Mm -hmm. Ultimate strings quilt. Nope, because I'm now ready to hook these together. So I'm creating a really super, super duper long, 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 long <laughs> string piece. And hopefully it's enough to go all the way around the quilt. So now I'm going to just flip up this edge because it's close now instead of breaking it. So you can see it's like a circle, kind of like how I do my binding. Grab that next edge. Oops, that's the same as that one. Let's find this one. Okay, that's different. Trying to make sure that no same fabrics are within two or three pieces of each other. Kathleen says 99% of the time she doesn't pay attention to food on TV. With the exception of commercials and those typically turn her tummy. <laughs> yeah. Because she has kids that eat every meal out. <laughs> that's mama's cooking. I even see things in movies like them making bacon and I want to go to the kitchen and make bacon. So... You know, it's a little bit of every kind of craving I get from watching TV. You're just a foodie. I'm just a foodie, yeah. I like to eat. No, you don't eat like me. Yeah. So I'm just grabbing end after end after end. I don't want two greens next to each other either. And like I said, I may have to add some more strings to this or make a bunch of string sets. Depending on if this doesn't fit all the way around the quilt. We will see. Because I'm going to add my border first and then add this. So I'm going to add my first border and then this. And if it's not pieced perfect, it's because it's strings and it really doesn't really matter. Come on. As long as I have a quarter inch seam, I guess. So as you've been noticing, these pieces are all within one and a half to two inch range. Some have been smaller, but Hi, Kelly. I'm going to be cutting to size when I add them to the quilt. Technically, I'm going to add them to the borders first. Hook to the borders first. So now I'm continuously, once I separate these, I should have one really continuously long strip. So I told you, it goes pretty quick once you start. Oh, that's the same as that one. Let's. Oh, that's the same as that one, too. Grab another piece. Okay, that's different. Good. What the coincidences of both of them being the same on both ends? Kelly says 
She goes, peace and quiet while the puppy naps. <laughs> Oh, puppies are always fun and crazy and a little bit wild and keep you up all night and whine and whimper and need to go out 500 times a day. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've had a puppy. Long, long time. Years upon years. Okay, so I'm going to put this right here and you guys are going to watch how this becomes one long, long, long piece. So let's find the first one, separate it. Notice it's continuously there. Notice it's still continuously there. So I trim all these. It becomes a super long, long, long piece. So that's the advantages of chain piecing. It, you get more done. I think quicker instead of having to hook this, hook that, and then stopping, and you know what I mean. You know what I mean. All right. Blurry, are you still on over there? Yes, it's still on. Okay, sure. All right. So now that we have. I know. I have no idea how long this is. That we have this. We're going to flip the camera back around. And I told you in advance that the cameras will move. The camera will move around during my. videos. Alright, so now that I have this super duper long piece, it does not to me look like it's going to go all the way around this quilt. It definitely does not look like, let's see, two 70s. We're going to see right now because it's 70 and then I'm adding a two and a half inch first border, so 45, 45, 55, 65, and 70. So there's one. So let's see. Right there at that green piece. That's one side. Well, Kelly says Ferris got uh, all clear this morning and her daughter took him to work at the vet clinic. She's a vet tech. So there's two 70s. Now let's see if I have two 84s and then hope that there's like a couple extra inches. So from there, let's see. We got... I'm measuring and counting. I hate measuring. 35. Hi, June. June says hi, honey. Hi. 45, 55, 65, 75. We're going to 84, so I'm just going to go to 85. So there's one. Let's do that again. Oh my gosh, it might just be enough. 35, 45, 55, 65, oh yeah, this is plenty. Oh my gosh, it didn't look like it. 75, How much do you need? 85, yep. Okay, so I have plenty with this much left over. So this is going to go all the way around. Two 70s and, well, plus whatever I add when I put this on. Plus two 84s plus whatever I add when I put this on. So, first kit. Let's bring this back so you can see me cut. We're going to cut my yardage. I thought you were going to make a small foot. What are you making? That's the border. Part of oh, the border. That's huge already. Yeah. All right. So, I'm going to cut two and a half inch strips, and I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I thought you were going to make eight. Out of I need eight. Two and a half inch strips. So we're going to come over to my ruler here and cut eight two and a half inch strips. And this should be a straight edge. Two and a half. Two and a half. Hi, Kelly. You got some tips on spin. Yep, that's Scott. Scott's, <laughs> she says, is that me? That's Scott, my husband, reading the comments. Makes it easier so that I can. Um, continuously work and chat and not have to pause to chat every time so I can keep going continuously. Three. So you're not making two quilts out of it? Then? No. I thought you were originally doing that. No. Nope. Oh. I changed my mind. Oh. I was going to finish it as I'm finishing okay. it. I was just confused. I didn't even know what we were doing. Four. <laughs> There's four. two and a half inch strips and they're all falling on the floor now. <clears throat> oh, it's funny. Okay.
Kelly says, perfect system. Yeah. Five. So now you can see cutting yardage is actually going good with this ruler or with this cutter. I have not done that yet till just now. Six, and it cuts so nicely. This will be seven. And hold the top of my ruler. It's because this ruler has grip on it. So as long as I'm holding it somewhere, it's gripped to the fabric and it doesn't slide down. See that? It doesn't leave my mark. So as long as um, they fell on the floor, so you I pick, pick them, up? them up. No, I got it. Okay. And then we're going to do this in a chain piecing matter too. Manner, not matter, manner. Because oh, they would make it so much easier. I asked you if you want to pick them up for you. All right, so eight. And then again, I have to cut another eight for the opposite side. Because I'm going to be encasing this whole entire string thing with black on each side. Before I even touch the quilt top, we're making the border. We're making the border in pieces. So let's cut eight more. Actually, we're going to cut nine in total now this time. And then we're going to hook all of them together continuously, which I'll show you guys how I do that. Because some of you have asked in the past how I do that. So nine more. And now you'll have an up close and whatever view once I move the camera to do that. If anybody has any questions or anything, you can always ask anytime. We're just talking to each other right now. I stand and cut better than I sit and cut, I've noticed, even with this cutter. For yardage, at least. So there's four. Now to cut five more. All right. Bring the table saw in here. Have you chopping on that? Huh? All right, five more. One. Come on. It's hard to line up black on black lines. I do have to tell you that for beginners, uh, rulers that have black lines on them and using black fabric, you kind of have a harder time being. But if I see the fabric poking out beyond the line, then I know I've gone too far. So that's how I get correct every time, as correct as can be. I can't tell you how many times my measurements have been off because they have a bazillion times now. Pat, ask how you like your cutter. I like it, but I don't think it's stopping anything or arthritis wise. I mean, right here is hurting me because I'm standing to cut instead of sitting to cut. But other than that, um, I don't know. I don't really notice a, that much of a difference other than holding it, like I said, with the other ruler. All right. So now I'm going to cut all the selvages off at once. Kelly says her hubby suggests tools too. She needs a laser level another project and he doesn't have one so i'm gonna line all these salvages <laughs> up and chop all of my salvages off real quick jim says he likes black except for the cutting yeah it makes it hard that's the only thing about using black but i use black in so much of my quilts i honestly prefer black especially with super lots of color because black helps those other colors pop forward and you see those with white, it's like it feeds back into it. Um, so that's why you guys see every time I do a pattern or something, black is the go-to color. Or other colors other than white. I don't use white very often. Plus, white gets so filthy. I have white on two of my quilts, and yeah, it gets filthy quick. So, so I'm just stacking all these up. I'm just, like, adjusting the strips so that the selvage is... Nicely at one side so that I can cut them all at once. It makes it so much easier. So much easier. And you know what I like about easy? Jim says, with my eyesight, I've been buying black pre-cuts. Yeah, that helps. So that way you don't have to cut them 
Hi, Kathy. Like Kathy's this. here. She says, hi, Tiffany. I'm sorry I'm late. I haven't been getting your notice that you are on. Oh, sorry. I tried to make it come on half an hour before the notice thing, but it didn't click. I don't know why. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. All right. So now I'm going to line all these up so I can cut them all at the June same exact time. June says the same here. It's the error age. I so and hope. <laughs> I cut. I hope that my cut is right. All right, everything's nicely lined up. Kelly said that's a great idea for Jim to bone pre cuts. I am going to go ahead and pop all the salvages off at one consecutive time. Look at this. Let's see if I can do it. Just... Oh, it cuts like butter. That was like five in each pack. <laughs> all right. Nope, oh, she's using a new cutter. Must like it. So. For those that are curious how I can usually turn this into one long strip, let's go over to the sewing machine. So you're going to move in two cents, and I'm going to show you how I big stack of was uh, eight, nine. <laughs> Seventeen. <laughs> Why can't I do math in my head on the spot? I yeah. just do it. Okay, 17. We're going to turn all of these 17 pieces into one super duper duper looper enormous long strip. However much as that becomes. All right, here we go. Hi, June. June's back. All right. I'm going to turn you guys around now. You don't want a close up of my face, do you? <laughs> all right, here we go. Back into the throat of the machine. Maybe they do want a close up of your face. Ah. They want to see the hot mama. No. No. Okay. So stack. All of my ends are on one side. I just Maybe freshly. She can't see black very well to sew it, stitch it, etc. Yes, June. Enjoying snow photos. I love look, but I do not love play. <laughs> you will not catch me playing in any this year. So I get you guys' photo instead. All right. So my stack. They're all on top of other. I'm going to take this ball piece. Make sure it's just the one, this bottom piece, and I'll move that out of the way completely. Oh, listen to this. Kelly likes your hair. So I'm going to take these two pieces that are next, and I'm going to put them under here and sew them. I'm going to grab the next two, because now they are right sides together. Sew them through. Grab the next two, like this. So orange seam, grab the next two. Sometimes it'll be long and just have to readjust it because of the way I'm rolling it in my hand right now. Grab the next two, just like this. Like that. Grab the next two. Two. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start telling you guys to grab the next two and he can read comments for a second. Oh, I hate my haircut. I wish it would just grow back. I, uh, for some reason, it's not that I hate short hair. I love short hair. But I think I look weird with short hair. Maybe it's the hair color. I don't know. But whatever it is, I want my long hair back. I miss it. Even though I hate the ponytail headaches. I like absolutely 100% hate the ponytail headaches. Oops. I did not sew that directly correctly. Directly correctly. <laughs> directly correctly. That is okay. Next one because I'm not really a seam snob, so I don't care. All right, we're still going over and over again until this whole entire pile in my hand is out of doubles. So you'll see in a second. So I'm almost to the end. So. Hi Diane. Diane's joining by her phone. The tablet is charging. Hi Diane. Hello everybody that is joining. All right, so here I have three pieces left. You can see that. Just grabbing these two, throw that other one out of the way completely, line these last two up, sew them through. So once I cut my thread, and I go and snip all this right here. 
pull them all towards me. Snip every single one of them. There should be 16 snips because there were 17 pieces. So that means there's 16 snips to go. And when I move the camera, you guys are going to see that I had no... This is my no effort sewing here because I literally did not put any effort really into this. So here we go. Ready? I'm going to find that last end that I threw away in the first place. Where did it go? So here's my end. Now I continuously have right sides together all the way. Every single one of my seams should be on the same, same side all the way along this super duper looper long 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 piece <laughs> just covered in all right so now i'm going to find an end right there aha there's an end and now i am going to grab my big huge piece here and we're going to find an end of that somewhere somewhere in this back of strings Ask me never to sing again, please. That was horrible. No, we like your singing. <laughs> you don't ever sing in front of people anymore. You used to. All right, so I'm going to take my singer. big stack of strings and I'm going to throw it on the floor, but I'm holding the end still. That is next to me on one side. I'm going to put the presser foot down just to hold it in place. And now I'm also going to take an end here, but I'm going to find where there's a seam to make sure that that stays right sides down because I'm going to bring that here. Yes, Jim, she right is. Right sides down. And I'm also going to stick that under here and let it sit Jim for the says moment. Jim you be silly again. And I'm going to take this big, huge stack that I just threw around and throw that on the floor next to me as well. And then we're going to come over here to the machine. And instead of the frontal, frontal view, I'm going to give you guys a <laughs> side view so that you can see how I hold this with my hand to continuously 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 so and I'm not going to go all the way down because I don't need both sides of the all the way down June says singing equals happy so there okay. you go so and I know Sing you guys have more. light um light peeking through <laughs> yeah the light isn't a isn't a bother on this it doesn't make oh. it glare okay good not for this no, no, no. all right so this is how I do this so I'm going to start my seam one finger, this first finger, my pointer finger, goes right here in the middle. My thumb goes on top, and the rest of my fingers go on the bottom. This is how I continuously, hold on, let's go like this. I continuously am able to adjust this top like this, like this, back and forth, to make sure that my seam stays aligned. And I really wanted you guys to know how I do this, because often this is how I do things. So, here we go. I'm just going to... One hand stays up here. I did not press any of these seams, but once they hit this tray, they will flip the way that they want to flip because I could care less which way they flip. We're just going to continuously, I'm pulling these up, lining these with the, the first finger in the middle, my, my thumb on the top, and the rest of my fingers on the bottom. Continuously lining up. Just like this, all the way down. Like continuously, all the way down. And then I just pull some more up and just keep on going all the way. And my seams will fold as I come to them. doesn't really matter anyway because I will be pressing this whole entire long, 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 long disaster. My other hand is up here making sure that this just stays straight because my other hand down here is actually adjusting fabric as I go. Really sits down and forth and goes through long seams like that too. Yeah. Doing I've stuff. been doing this since I started sewing because I like the the continuous movement of the machine. <laughs> doing these live videos, nice to know there's intelligent life out there during isolating. Right. <laughs> I like that. That's funny. So I have to keep going down onto my pile and adjusting. It's going pretty quickly. It keeps wanting to turn before it hits my lap. But that's what my hand is doing. It's continuously 
Oh, and June yeah. agrees with her. She says, you got that right, Shirley. <laughs> Yeah, I just put the pedal to the metal and the machine. Oh, it is on its fastest. Okay. So in your the in your visiting here, the day in the life of my room you get to see how i sew normally so you guys wonder how i get things done so fast this is how these all these extra things that i do is why it gets done in quick amounts of time i'll find some more because it's totally like tangling up down here that's okay though i just continue on bring a lot of it to my lap Continue on. And I don't need to go all the way down, but I don't know where I'm stopping. Probably stop when I get, I don't know, most of the way. Maybe I should have counted down eight strips and then stopped, huh? Yeah. to those who have to leave and hello to all those who are joining. Like this is just I need to count how many I'm down. I don't think I'm at least eight strings down, but we'll see right now. Let's find the end. Where's the end? Where is it? Hello, end. Where are you? Okay, let's see. We are one. I'm counting seams. Two. Come on. Turn around. Three. Four. Five, six. All right, so I'm on piece seven. All Lisa right. Lisa says I cannot sew that fast. If I did, I'd be fog sewing for hours. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is seven right here, and then we're gonna stop at like the eight, and that way I can go on the other side. Oh, no, I cannot. I need red. Mary says, and she I, isn't used to how fast her new banana goes, and she sewed right over a pin the other night. I know, I saw that. T's awesome, though. She oh, can man, that's dark blue. That's not even black. I need to roll some black, so you guys get to hang out while I roll a spool of thread real quick. But then this is what I would do, even off camera. I've been really lazy lately about this rolling bobbins to have it pre-rolled for camera. No, I do not. Okay. Pre-rolled for camera recording because I used to when I first started YouTubing. I start. I always had my. Um, I always had my bobbins rolled and ready so that I wouldn't have to sit and do this. But lately, like the last like four so Sundays, I have not rolled any advanced rolling of my bobbins. But this is kind of loud. That's why it probably sounds like I'm shouting. We're going to roll a second one only because we're right here and it's already set up. That way, if I run out again, I have at least a continuous. Um, okay, come on, just do the thing. A continuous amount. Yeah.
before they look out of that one. And then we're going to slide that one in here, close that up, snip this one, and re-thread this machine. And for the life of me, I still, to this day, and I'll say it a bazillion times, do not know how to use that stupid thread around here. So I just use my little birdie threader that I got from one of my subscribers. All right, where was I? That is a cute little threader, I gotta admit. All right, it, I'm gonna snip away this a dinky little long thing. little piece. All right, and we're gonna continue on now. This was seven. All right, now this is the eighth piece. So after this seam, I'm gonna stop and run it on the opposite side. Actually, I could do eight and a half. That should be enough, right? Eight and a half. Don't ask me. I don't know. <laughs> Cause I cut eight and nine, so eight and a half and eight and a half. Yeah. So this will be eight. Wind Sprinter is on. They say hello from Maryland. Hello. All right. Do you call it tag name or whatever? All right. So this is eight, and then we're gonna go halfway through, and then I'm gonna snip it. Halfway through. Halfway through. And that would be about right there. Look at that. And I have a marking where to stop. Which is coming up. Right there. Alright, so what I'm going to do is take my scissors and I'm going to cut this away. Diane says you could work in those clothing factories, pedal to the metal. I probably could. Oh yeah, that was plenty. Alright, here we go. So now I'm going to put the other eight and a half inch, eight and a half I <laughs> can't even talk on this opposite side. So, hold on, let me find my end here. I'm going to turn it this way because I can. We're going to make <laughs> sure that this seam is right here facing up. Come to it. Yep, it's facing up. And we're going to start right here. Do a back stitch. And then I am going to continuously sew this on, but it probably won't be as fast because now one is coming from one side of me and the other is coming from the other side of me. But we're going to go as fast as I can. Get it in. And then I do have to press all this, but I will be pressing way towards the black, so it's not going to matter. how I will be making my borders and I'm also going to make corners as soon as I find out how much exactly this whole piece equals because I didn't really measure for correctly but I'm pretty sure it's like going to be eight and a quarter maybe not sure maybe it's seven and three quarters I'm just guessing because I suck at math and you guys all know that <laughs> I know one plus one is 11. That's all I know. I'm really not that smart. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. Okay, one plus one is one. <laughs> okay. I don't know where you're going with that, but okay. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll be more smarter. You're not dumb. Okay. Scotty, when I think I'm halfway through, will you turn the iron on for me? Not yet. Not until I'm halfway through. Okay. That'll give it time to warm up. Okay, it's plugged to something, really. I have this coming from my right or my left.
my right. Look at it. I didn't even know my right and my left. That must be. That must mean something. Just kidding. <laughs> Shirley says that I've been isolating so long when I wake up, I have to talk to myself just so I don't lose my voice. <laughs> you know, that's the truth, though. Everybody's been home this whole time. Nobody's been around anybody, and if you are, it's only phone calls or Skype or Facebook Messenger. And yes, back to Diane's thing. I probably could work in a sweat factory and consistently sew the same seam over and over and over. <laughs> But I do get things done pretty darn quick. So. Yeah, you can be making clothes for Calvin Klein. No. Better work zillion. stays out of my throat space have you guys ever stitched something consistently and then the end of it comes up here and ends up going under i've done that twice now since i've owned this juki where i speed sew and the pile and the throat like this making a big mess because it hit the wall where i used to sit and then the sucked in under oh my goodness what, let me tell you what a disaster what a Diane saying to Shirley that I talk to my dog. <laughs> yeah, if you have pets, talk to them. Yep. And Billy says she worked in a sewing factory for 25 years. Nike men's slack. And did you get swapped around from area to area, though, so you weren't always sewing the right leg together or the left leg together? <laughs> I've seen how some of those factories are on uh, video tutorials, like not tutorials, but videos on um, YouTube that's made. It's making men's slacks for Hagger slacks. I don't know what that is. Haggard? Ha Hagger. H A G G A R. Hagger. Oh, like uh, that's the name of the brand of stuff that does the uniforms around here. Hagger. Mm. I don't know. Almost there. Almost to the end. Da, 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 da. I do have to say one symptom about having MS and sewing is the fact that I do this and the fabric runs along my my thumb and my first finger and my under finger. So like three of my fingers go fabric numb because they consistently feel it coming through at a fast speed. And it's like, I could see that. it starts feeling numb, like a tingly sensation. And then it comes to the point where every single fabric feels the same. My shirt will start feeling like quilt cotton. Because <laughs> everything that I'm touching is quilt cotton. Oh, it's funny. <laughs> June's uh, talking to her and she talks to her pets too. And they don't argue back or disagree. Unless you have a bird. A talking bird. <laughs> if you get a talking bird, then you have someone to actually talk to. Because some of them talk back. Billy says she was a house utility. Had to be able to run all the machines and make production. Too old to do that now. <laughs> that works. She's too old to do that. Now. I would work pretty good in a We don't have that kind of stuff here, but I'm pretty sure I could work in a factory. But we don't have factories here, so. Technically, we got Sterilite. Uh, yeah, we have Sterilite, and I used to work sewing. there. They know what Sterilite is because <laughs> they buy the tubs to store their fabric. Yeah. And look at this. It's going to end right at the beginning. Almost Same as Check it out because I split it in half. I ended exactly at the front.
That's cool. <laughs> All right, now let's take this over to the ironing board, where we're going to suck because we have an iron that needs to be charged every two seconds. Not charged, but put back on. So, give me two seconds and I'll turn the camera oh, around. Oh, it's still good iron. It's still good iron, yes, but it doesn't stay on long. All right, so I'm going <laughs> to... Diane says, like our this. great thing talks a lot. I just go with it. And I'm going to bring you guys... <laughs> Funny, Diane. Right here. And you just gonna want me. Do you want to look at this? For to go. Okay. Poppy. Okay. New goal. So have it split like this, as you can see, laid down. So what we're gonna be doing is folding this back. Oh well, if it would help if my phone cord was not in the way. You guys are gonna wiggle for a second. We're gonna be splitting this back like that and pressing it. Splitting that back like that and pressing it, and voila, we will have this beautiful piece of fabric. All right, so here we go. This is like too close. I don't know why. This is the worst angle possible. And the iron is up here. Okay, hold on two seconds. Here we go. That's better. Right? Yep. See? Much better. Let's hope it stays. It should. Okay. That way I'm not hitting the cord a bazillion times, too, because I am attached to a cord. All right, start on this end. I'm just going to go back and forth, just like this. And I'm going to use steam. Go back and forth and then go back and use steam. Go back and forth. Go back and use steam. Just like this. That way I'm opening the seam with my hand, as you can see, in advance. And then I'm also opening it with the iron. So it's just opening it, opening it. So I have now created myself a super. We're going to make sure that that seam is good. And it is. That seam is good. And everything's opened up. There's no folds, pleats, creases. Put this darn thing back on its chamabobber. Look at that. I don't feel any folds. Don't feel any folds. Oh, there's a, no, that's the thing underneath. No folds. So now, move on. So right about here. Again, folding it back by hand. Just like that. Like that, like that, like that. Everything's back. Again, open it up. Go over it. Come back, steam. Open it. Come back, steam. Open it. Bam. Make sure those are folded. Open it. And steam. All the way down. And as you can tell, I'm picking up threads from everywhere. Now you know why I use black thread to sew this because, yeah. All right, so let's pull it down some more. Open this up. I'm just pressing the seam towards the black. This is going to be such an awesome border because I'm going to be cutting it to size. You'll see as I go. Oh, come on. It didn't heat up enough. I guess I can read. I was thinking about mitered corners. I really was. I might, Jim. I'm not sure. Okay, this got home school. It's not working. Then this black guy saw that. That was red to me. Was the utility house be able to run machines? Production's too old now. Our great Dan talks to me. Go with it. Uh, it was just me and a cat for a while. Yeah, I was thinking about my orders. Trust me. Um, I might just do that. But I also wanted to just do a black squared corner. So I was going to cut these to the length of both sides of the quilt, the 70 and the 84, so on and so forth, and then add a square, this size, in black in the corners, just to um, do that. But see, I will make my decision up as I go, because that's how I do things. Did you read on mm -hmm. Lots and lots of stuff. Steam. Now we gotta let this charge again or heat up. 
Alright, so I'm going to pull it down. Kathy's is very pretty. Mary's is pretty. I'm telling you, ultimate strings quilt. This is like the ultimate border. And if I wanted, I could make the next border more strings, but I really just like this. I like it like this. I like it a lot. Okay. Pushing it open. Steaming. Diane says, awesome. Which quilt is it for? It's for the one that's laying here in a big, huge pile. <laughs> My ultimate right strings quilt. Don't worry, I'm going to show you guys as soon as this is all ironed. I'm going to show you the whole thing again because I need to cut these to size. I don't know if I do mitered borders or not. I don't. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I'm. I don't want. Says I like it. What size is the middle? I don't know how big this is yet. The middle is three and three quarters, but it finishes at three and a quarter. Yeah, three and a quarter. It was my leftover string squares, and I turned them into this by cutting them in half. That way I used up everything, and I don't have a bunch of extra blocks that I didn't need for anything else that would sit in the drawer forever and a day, because that's what would happen. I definitely should have switched to an iron that is on a cord. But I didn't. Do you want me to plug this one in? No, I don't want to. I already got this one plugged in. I'm good. Well, I can iron for you. No, I'm good. Okay, then. You'd be a picky boy. Yeah, for those that just joined and haven't seen the current project that I'm doing, I will show the whole thing in two seconds when this is ironed. Yeah. June says she had to leave when you were making it, so she didn't hear what size, but she liked it. Yeah. All right, let's go under, grab another water. Oh, I could have done that for you. That'll be enough, right? Fill this darn thing up. Billy says I still have a commercial serger and lock stitch machine. Oh, that's cool. Add some steam to this area. Oh, and it's not going to steam. Go figure. Do you want me to plug the other one in? No, I'm good. Just gonna pull that to up. I can plug the other one in. No, it's fine. Just going to continue on with this one. I'm almost done. There's no point in plugging another one in. All right, then. So I'm poking it out. Pressing the steam. Coming to the front. Pressing the steam. I'm separating it with my fingers so that the seam does not fold. You don't want folds in it. It'll change its size throughout the whole border and that will suck. <laughs> that will suck. And since I didn't use really many black pieces throughout my strings, um, there's probably a couple, but they're off black. That means that all this pops out so well because, because there's not really any black. So you see all this color, it comes forward. You don't even pay attention to the black anymore. That's why I like using black in my quilts. Okay, I'm at the end. Okay. Get her done. All right. Just need a little bit of steam down here. Is all the rest of that that you didn't put black on? Is that all extra? Yep. That'll be the extra. And that looks like less than my... So, um, you're going to be on camera for two seconds because we're going to hold this quilt up carefully. We're going to back this up. We're going to say hi to Scott. And I'm going to show you guys what I had made. That this is the border for... Let's grab a end. 
I'm trying. I'm finding him. There we go. This is what the border is for. My ultimate strings quilt. We're going to come down a little so they can see the top. This is my ultimate strings quilt, guys. So for those that are just joining, this is those pieces I've been sewing for Sew Sundays and, and random videos. I've been making strings. And now we're going to actually attach these as borders. So you guys are going to stay in that position for a second because I have to lay this out right here. Billy I'm says it's gorgeous. This out of the way because I think I'm done with that. And I am going to bring you over here. Kathy says it's very Step you down. And we are going to make sure... Because I don't want to actually do tons of measurements and stuff. So what I'm going to do is we could do a mitered border. Could. With a big... Karen says, love it. All right. June a mitered very pretty. border. Let's see how wide this actually turned out now. So it should be... What did I say it was going to be? Eight and a quarter? It turns out it's seven and a half-ish. You awesome started eight, it with seven. an eight and whatever. Yeah. The finished so, product is what? Seven. What's the next one after that? So five, eight, one, two, yes. three, four, five, eight. Seven and five eighths. Don't ask why it's seven and five eighths. Maybe it's because of all these seams, but it is seven and five eighths. All right. Either way, if I wanted to do a mitered corner, we're going to pretend right this very second. So I would be attaching it this much more on the top. And watch, we're just going to grab an, another area because I don't have enough. We're going to put this like this, just so you could see. Leave that there. Hold it down. Stay down. Do you want me to help hold stuff Stay down. Can you help hold? Stay. There we go. And then for a mitered border it would look like this. So yeah, I'm going to fold this, this in like this at a 45 degree angle and then I would attach this side like this. So can you guys see? Can this be seen right here? I can't tell yet. So this is what a mitered one would look like. To a degree. No. Yeah, no, you so this is it. my audience help. Should it be mitered <clears throat> like that? Oh, that's or great. Or, we're going to put this back down for two seconds. Or, should it stop at the end, and then this would... Shirley says she loves watching you create. Mary says, wow. I can't make this Wind one says, stop beautiful. at the end, because I don't actually have an end to stop. So it would be right here, pretend like this. And then this side would stop right here, like this. Let me move that out of the way. Stay out of the way. So it would come like this, and then a black square right here. That is the size of this. What do you guys think? Should it be mitered, or should it have Deborah says a mitered. black square? Billy says love the right miter. Shirley just says loving it. I don't know if that she means this one or just the whole quilt all together. Karen says miter. So everyone's thinking a mitered edge. Mitered June border. says mitered, Kim is mitered. So far they are. Okay. Not everyone has commented. Then that is what we are going to go Linda with. Because I kind of like it too. <laughs> All right. Jim says mitered, but more work, I know. <laughs> well, you guys have never, well, it's been a long time since you've seen me do a mitered border. Lynn so says mitered. I'm Everybody gonna likes the mitered this... border. Where was I? I thought I looked cool too, yeah. to be honest. Um, Seven. What did I say? So we're going to do seven. Deborah's we're going to make it stick so out eight inches beyond because I want my diagonal. So I'm going to start sewing this side with eight inches to spare. Well, hold on. For those of us that have no idea what you're talking about. Well, yeah. Slow down. Yeah. Okay. For those of us that have no idea what you're talking about, why why can't it be seven inches or six inches? Why eight? Just oh, cause? because if you fold this in half like that, if you did seven inches, you would not have your end. Oh. It has to be more than the size of the piece. Oh, so I see. I get it. You have to hang it. over more than the see, size of the piece. See, and you said you didn't know that. See? <laughs> so I need this stick out to start about here. So 
I'm going to go ahead and throw this over like that. I'll do one more time before I start going that I have eight inches hanging over. Okay, versus yep, yep. <laughs> so I have eight inches hanging over. Since we're doing mitered, guess what you guys get to see me use? Pins. Pins. <laughs> if he knows, I'm hardly ever pins. You guys get to see me use pins. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go along the whole entire side now of this quilt and start putting pins in. I'm going to flatten this out, line this on here. Everything stays flat, and we're going to start putting pins in the whole entire thing. Why? Because we're doing writer course, so I need this pin. Okay, do you want to do anything here or no? No. Okay. So, so I'm now, lining it up. And, and throwing a pin in. I'm not good lining at it. it up, throwing a pin in. Be in the camera. <laughs> lining it up, throwing a pin in. Dan says, I like the square. Jim says pins with two exclamation points. Right. Mary yeah. says I didn't know you had pins. Yeah, it's a miracle. Diane, I'm sorry you're the only one that chose the square. <laughs> I, I already like it the other way, so. Everyone this, else this did, way, the, the did the miter. <laughs> I like it better. It like makes it even look more ultimate strings, quilt stringy. So this is what we're going with. And then you guys also get to learn how to do mitered borders. Pins. She has pins. Yep. <laughs> Not enough to go all the way around. Well, technically, I do in another container. All right, so I'm stopping right here. Here's my end. Can you see this on the camera? I'm making sure we're on camera here so that you guys can see. Shirley says, all right. gosh darn, gee whiz, that's cool. Love it with the okay. miter. <laughs> so here's the end of the quilt top. I want to come eight more inches beyond that. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this ruler actually right here because this is eight and a half inches and I'm going to lay my half inch mark right about there half Karen, inch we are See? in Lake Havasu City I'm in Arizona in Lake Havasu so I'm going to come she's in Mesa that's ah. like four hours away yep. not that far so I'm going to lay this on here just like that lay this right here and look I'm cutting out a seam too this is kind of cool <laughs> how perfect the hen says it again I don't want the black lines <laughs> All right, so there is my first cut, hanging over eight inches because of the width of my um, border. I am going to now sew this on because I don't have enough pins to go on the other side. We're going to sew this one on first. We're going to add another side and sew this on, sew on, blah, blah, blah. And I'll show you guys how to do the miters at the end. Here we go. Let's go. Oh, my goodness. This is going to be hard. Give me my tripod. Okay. We're going to put it behind me. That way they can watch how this mitered corner thing works. All right, guys, we're going to be moving around, but we're going to just put you up on a tripod behind me in hopes that it does not get in my way. I know lots of movement with these videos, but you're in experiencing all sorts of stuff in my quilting room. So Tiffy Karen says, nice, I would like... To come meet you if things ever clear up. You make me smile. Aw, thank you. All right, here we go. We're always there for quilting visitors. Yep. He loves quilting friends. All right, so we're going to keep you guys right here. Put you to work making something. And I'm going to show you how to on do tip. mitered borders. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you'll put her to work on a live making something. Yeah. For those of you who aren't scared to be on a live, you can come join us. Well, you've had Justin on, you've had your mom on, you've had Lex on, you've my had aunt Maxine. On. Yes, you've had your aunt, aunt Linda. All right, here we go. We're going to bring this right here. I'm going to pull all this up, and it's a good thing I pinned it because, look at that, thing started moving and adjusting. Karen says, awesome. All right, so here's my crunch. So I know you can see here. I want to come down a quarter of an inch from that edge. So lay this back on top of here. Let's make sure that it stays nice and flat. Hi, Sharon. I'm coming down she says hi. a quarter of an inch, and I'm going to put my pin there for now because I want my needle. Oh, man. i got to put my pin in this way. Diane says she likes the square because it's a good blank space for quilting. Yeah. When you quilt it. All right. I'm going to put my needle in. I'm going to make sure that my needle gets dropped right there at that quarter of an inch mark right there so i'm actually hand turning my wheel so that that goes down a quarter of an inch in 
And if it's not, I will adjust it. But I'm going to take one stitch forward, one stitch back, and I'm going to stitch down this whole side. And I'm going to try not to... I'm literally next to a tripod, so it's just a little bit more harder to sew, but we will figure it out. So I'm just adjusting. Sewing a quarter inch seam. Adjusting as I go. Pulling my pins out because I hate pins so much. And I'm poking my leg with one of them. Um, it's okay. Lining everything up. Go all the way down. Quarter inch seam. Keeping everything lined up. Making sure that quilt top stays aligned on the wing area too. I'm trying not to stretch because there is a lot of seams. A lot of seams here. So try not to stretch anything or move it out of place or anything like that. Just lay it on here and so you can see going on down. So here we come, we're coming up to this side. So I want to peel this back so you can see. We're going to come down just a little bit further. I want to stop a quarter inch away from the edge. Now, if you don't trust, where's my little tiny ruler? Do you want me to right get it? There. Okay. If you don't okay. trust your quarter inch eyeballing like I do, you can lay this on here and put your pin in, you know, at a quarter inch. But since I can't see that she does both, from the bottom, Karen, do you mean for this quilt? She I'm gonna line to this you up. Machine quilt or long arm quilt? Uh, this will get long armed. This is gonna be way too big for me to play the finag finagle it game with the um, long arm or with the sit down machine. I take so now my pin quilt, in so. is in at a quarter inch away from the edge. I'm gonna come right up to that needle, right up to it. And I'm going to take a front stitch and a back stitch, and a front stitch and a back stitch. That way it's in there. And when I pull this apart, you can see, I'm going to put it under the camera, there is a quarter inch right there. See? Quarter inch. Okay? So that is a quarter inch open at that end and at the starting end. So I'm just going to be turning the head. I can't hit this. I'm going to leave you guys on the tripod and show you that whole process all over again. We're just going to leave you on the tripod, but turn you over to the table so that you can watch. If you could use clips. I could, I could, I could. Now I'm going to this side. Do you want me? No. Okay. Opposite side now. Right oh, I'm not on top and bottom. I'm on the top and bottom, I think. Honestly. All right, so I'm going to go again that is now tangled to my cord down here on the floor that you cannot see. I, I said I could help you. <laughs> Deborah says, I freaking love that quilt. It's so pretty. Yes, I do too. I can't wait for this to be done so it can be one of the 500 billionth quilts that I keep on my bed. Because <laughs> right now I have my quilt that you guys helped make on my bed. Because right now I have my quilt that you guys helped make on my bed with all my birthday blocks. Yes, all right. she does. We're going Same to, line. again, start right here. I need my pins again. Need the pins. We're going to come and lay this right here at the end. And I'm going to make sure that this hangs over eight inches. Right there. Because of this is pretty much eight inches. Of a, and I don't want to waste much fabric. I like to make my miters as close as I possibly can. Okay, well, I can't see anything. Our internet die on this, or did it? No, it's going over here. It's just on this. The whole screen looked like it was melting. Mm. Now I'm just gonna toss all my pins in. Billy here. says, "Please do a video of you long arming it." That will happen when it happens. Oops. Yep. She has another quilt on the long arm now. She doesn't always do them in order. If we were talking. 
about many times. She has a lot of projects going. Yeah, that that's works. why I wanted to show you guys my day in my life because I really have a ton of projects. <laughs> One of the day in life of videos, I should show you a, a day in life of how I make the decision on what quote load on the long arm. <laughs> because oof, there's so many choices, so many beautiful choices. Deborah says have a different quote for each month of the year. That's yeah, tough. That's me. Well, I'm getting there. She yeah. can do a video of her long arm and the one that's out there, but uh, we don't have any holes, right? No, there's a holder on there. It just doesn't hold very well. Oh, okay. Okay, come here. Almost end fully. Everything's nice and lined up. See, I'm keeping it flat the whole time so that you guys know you're seeing what I'm doing here. Now I'm at this end, so I want to come here again. I'm just going to let this ruler down for now, making sure it's on the one up to the edge of this right here, like that. I'm going to come down to the eight inches, and look, it's at that seam again. So all I have to do is grab a cutter and cut at the edge of that seam again. Look at that, worked perfect each time. So now I know that the top and bottom were ending at seams, which works out perfect because I'm using exactly a certain amount of inches of um, fabric. All right, let's grab one more pin to throw down here at the bottom. Really don't need to mark my quarter inch because I know where it is. But not all of you know where it is. Okay, so that's the next two sides. We're gonna move that out of the way. We're gonna come back down to the machine right here. We're going to do this all over again, trying to keep everything so straight and together so that you're not pulling and messing up a thing. And see, while I'm having a fun day teaching, you guys are learning something completely different today, which is mitered borders. All right, so I'm just going to drop my needle about a quarter inch in. So again, I would peel it back if you needed to mark it. Right here, you can mark it, but I'm going about two stitches above where this needle is with my needle. So I just drop my needle, and there we have it. And if I need to look, I just put my head in. Oh, okay, that's a quarter of an inch. Drop it, take a stitch forward and back, pull my pin out, and start the stitching. Making sure everything stays lined up. Don't forget to pull these darn pins out. I tend to sew too fast for pins. I'm using black thread, which works out perfect because my fabric is now black. Okay, pop that one out. What happens if you do so? Uh, depends on the needle. If you're using fine tip needles, you can sew over, but don't sew over the heads. I put my needles in with the head so that I can pop it out instead of on this side. Some people put them in from the left. Uh, I can't control putting a needle in from my left. I tr control it better from my right. So you, if you did it from your right on the edge, you just have to make sure that it's not next to your presser foot, but mine always seems to be, so I just pull it out and do my own stoppy type make sure I pull it out because I'm right-handed not left so I'm gonna stop a quarter inch away from that edge Jim says I don't know how to miter borders so I'm watching oh yes you're learning trust me okay so I'm gonna make sure look at this and I have my last stitch is at a quarter inch away so it's perfect now we need to do the sides so again we're gonna turn this whole quilt onto the table just like that. I'm going to turn you guys over this way and we're going to 
this out of the way for now, just like that. We're going to grab this wonderful thing. So since I put this up out of the way, it's eight inches. So all I need to do is take like that and it's my already need eight inches right there bam done so now i need to start pinning this side and again with the other side it's going to be the same exact thing when i get to the opposite end i'm just going to pop my pins in i'm flattening everything down as though i mean you could pressure the bin thing we're going to be you'll small measure cutter cut and so i should say and That's since all quilters have many projects on at once, we get distracted easy by the new project. Yes. Well, this will be done soon, and I'm going to add one final border after this, and then it'll be complete and hopefully huge enough to go on a queen bed. If not queen, it can fit on a bigger bed. That's how big it's going to end up. Flattening it all out. Yeah, he says true words were never spoken. On all the yeah, I have so many going. I mean, I finished my Cleo okay, fan blocks coming. because I am behind those. <laughs> Super behind. Okay. As long as you finished it, I'm over here. Yeah, I got a customer stuff. So, again, we're going to do that same thing. See this piece right here? I'm just going to fold it up out of the way like this and see how tall that is, uh, eight inches. So I'm just going to lay this on here like that. Cut her over. And I'm, if you want to make sure, you can. So eight inches from the edge ends right there. I'm going to go ahead, just chop this off right here, making sure that that's nice and straight. Actually, I'll cut it at that seam right there. There we go. Still on. Yeah, still on. Okay. All right. So we're going to come to here, and I'm hoping that you guys can see this now because this is a very crucial part of mitered seams. Every 10 seconds, our is dying. I'm going to pop this minutes. pin out so that you guys can see. Melting. All right. Can you see that? Yeah. No, oh, stop doing it. Like, so no, see, right here, no. we're going to zoom in so that you guys can see. Come on. Zoom a little bit more. I really want this to be 100% notable. Okay, so here's my quarter inch away, right? So if I folded that down and out of the way, I have a quarter inch available. So if I move this up and out of the way, which you can pin this whole thing up and out of the way, just like that. So say you want to throw a pin in it, just like that. When you bring this piece up, make sure it's flat again. And go back to flattening this because I pulled it out of the way. I want it flat, nice and flat. Now, when I pull this down, I get to start my stitching. Feels like it got out of the way, or not so. I get to start my stitching when this is up on that spot. So I'm going to drop my needle down when this is folded over that. I'm going to drop my needle down into that crease. I have to feel for it. Right there, right there, right there. Dropping my needle. Oops, there it is, right there. Into that crease. Drop my present foot, take a stitch forward, take a stitch back. There we go. Come down enough right here so that you can see that this and this touched. Well, they're off like ever so slightly. I need to go one stitch back, but that's okay. I'll fix it when I come to it. But you can see that these two steam seat steams, these two steams come together right there at a quarter of an inch. So I'll fix it in a second because it's not quite perfect. perfect. I almost came on that head. 
Got to watch out for that. Now you guys know why I don't use pins. <laughs> because I almost and or do run over them. Quite often. That's why I asked what happens when you run over one. Like this one's set far back. So I can go right past it. And then remember to pull it out. Since I lost count of mine, I'm pretty sure she's talking about the unfinished project. Out. Now we're coming up onto this one. See, I have a quarter of an inch oh, sticking out still. Ah, stay. So there's a quarter of an inch. I'm going to stop this needle right in that corner, right before it. So to make it right to it. You can crease it, you can mark it. Back stitch. There he says, I'm not going to try to count. Oh, I could go one more stitch up. Look at that. One. Two, one more. There we go. Now, I should have them touching. This is what it's supposed to look like. Right there. See, they're touching. Right there in the corner. Quarter inch seam. Right there. Yay. So this top one I'm going to fix by going up a stitch. So I'm just going to pop my needle up a stitch real quick. Just so that it's nice and better than it is. Oh, the stitch right there. Now it should be touching. And it is touching. Okay, so there's those. Let's do the other side now. I gotta. Jim says, not too many UFOs for me. I sew them into backing. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna turn you guys back this way and we're gonna attach one. Shirley says, I only really started quilting about a year ago, and already I have too many to count. <laughs> These on. All right, so here's my last one. Oh, maybe you should have. Right. Let's see right now. If I have to add to it, I'll add before I put these on. I'm just going to see real quick without pinning how far down. It literally lands at the start. Oh my gosh. So I need to add eight inches of border to each side real quick, guys. That's not hard. You nope, can do I'll that just quick. Cut one strip off of my can you give me my bolt of five of my black? Yeah. We're gonna rip this off real quick. Just a little so that I can add some seams here. I need a seam ripper. Deborah likes it. Jim's idea. Yeah, that was eight inch too shy, guys. And just remember, if that has to you, don't count. I'm going to press this quick so that I can find that seam. Diane says she did that last year, but had to go up. <laughs> what, mitered borders? So putting the stuff in the backing, the oh. hose, sewing them in the backing. That's what Jim said he does with his. And Deborah said, excellent idea. And Diane said she tried it last year, but had to give up. Okay. Let's pick this out real quick. I need to probably super zoom on my cheek or something. Get out of there. I'm going to pull it back and then we're going to add no, a little bit of fabric. Like I was literally right at the edge. So we have strips be at the edge, not where I really wanted to be. This kind and of says, oopsie. It happens. Trying to see in your hands, like you in your head at all. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know it was that close. So I'm just picking this apart just a bit on both of these so that I can add uh, to it. <laughs> so you guys never really get to use seam rippers. This is how it. <laughs> there you go. Showing them everything. Yeah. Okay, come on, get in there. One thing I don't like about seam rippers is sometimes I back stitch and I can't get that original back stitch pull up. There we go. And just enough. Just enough. There we go. All right. Let's cut a strip of black. Just one, two, and a half inch strip. Just going to add to the end. Two and a half, two and a half. Bam, 
just saw that. Where's my cutter? Right there. Oh, wow. This is super crooked now, too. I don't care. Crooked. Uh -huh. Oh, every once in a while when you're cutting strips, this happens. It's a... All right. So I cut like the bridge off, and then I'm just going to cut the strip in half <laughs> and just each side on. Big deal. I'll have leftover. I should have just sewed all the down. Right. Mary says I started quilting 22 years ago, but my stepdaughter and I started doing craft shows until both of our husbands got sick and we had to quit. I keep buying fabrics as if we're still in business. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and flip this over like this. And I'm going to start with one and put this on right sides together like this. We hear you, Kathy. Kathy has six quilt tops. She needs to buy a bedding for them. At the moment, she so can't afford it. there's one. And now I'm going to move that out of the way and hook Tiff has been another in this boat many one times. to this side, right sides together. How do you know which side is the right and which way is the wrong? I don't, I have no clue. I've just guessed. So now that those are both on, I can turn this around and come here and stitch these on. So there what happens if you run out of fabric, just add like I just did right there. Just gonna pull right off what the she edge. loves about you is that you use whatever you have and you always come up with something beautiful. Yeah, I try to. Nikki's used the uh, flat sheets for the backing of two her quilts. You've done that. Yep. Many times. I use sheets all the time. Not just many times, most times. Especially for big quilts. I find cotton sheets online and it's cheaper than buying regular fabric and the cotton sheets are the same quality. All right, let me press this real quick, which the iron was moving Kim's on. I'll be right. right back to the sewing in two seconds. Let me just get this pressed open. Kim says I have 14 quilt tops done and I have backing. But right now, I can't afford batting. Yep. Catch yep. been in that boat many times. Many, many times. All right, so now so that's done. Um, bills come first. <laughs> we're going to move this out of the way. Out of the way. We're going to bring this back to right here. Because we're going to have this sticking up its eight inches as our where to lay the first piece. After I press first, give me a second. Have you done the Daniela Blick with the strip tube ruler? Brenda got it from Cozy Quilt, and she's asking if anyone's done it. The what? Daniela what? Blick. No. With the strip tube ruler. Never heard of it. For making the mitered borders? I don't know if that's what she's... She just asking a question out there? Yeah, you can if you want. I mean, here's a strip tube ruler. It's not big enough, but... Um, technically, this would be the top, so if you lay it right here on the seam, you can use the strip tube ruler, you know, where you're going to draw your line from the quarter inch edge, um, and do it that way, I guess, you could. I wouldn't, though. I would want it more accurate. There you go. Leona asks, I have a lot of tops. What do you charge to long run? I charge two cents a square inch, but usually people bring me their quilts because I do my own thing. Because I mean, you can give me a general idea of what you would want, like if you would want whatever on it, like flowers or something. But I free motion quilt everything. I'm not a computer, so you can't really choose. You just say, have fun with it. That's why I charge what I charge so that I can have fun with your quilts, <laughs> you know. I'm just gonna lay this here through it. Mm -hmm. Yes, Diane, that's right. Diane says Tiff goes to garage sales and estate sales anywhere she can pick up fabric. Yes, yep. that is true. I am 100% a thrifter. We thrifty, get it from thrifty. neighbors. We get it from thrift stores. We get it here, there, and everywhere. Yeah. Anybody that wants to donate fabric, I take it in. And here I'm gonna turn this a little bit again. 
Mary says, mm -hmm. Mary Place will have. I buy sales, hobby sales from Walmart. I buy regular fault walk that are not even sales. And then we buy online Joanne sales when we can. And uh, Marshall Drive. Same price, if not more than Joanne and Hobby Lobby. Which kind of sucks because really Walmart tough. was my go to place. Plus, I can't get um, bolts of socks anymore from Walmart because they don't sell it that way anymore. To buy it in the three yard increments, which really sucks because I like continual yardage. So, now yep. I buy my yardage from Mar uh, Marshall Dry Goods. Yep, you can buy three yards is the most you can get at Walmart. At the time, they're still always out of black and white. Yeah, the black and white is always are constantly out. Gone. And their batting costs more than Marshall Dry Goods now. We used to buy batting from Walmart like crazy. Oh man, this is going to have a scene right there. Oh well. I could have went up a little bit, but, but flow. Just like that. All right, let's cut it um, right there, and right there. I'm just gonna cut right here. Come on, expose the blade. I'm gonna cut this on a seam like that. Not exactly how I wanted to do this, but we're gonna make it work. So this is what I have left right here long tail. All right, let's sew this last side on and get to the mind borders. Leon, if you ever really are interested to know more, you can always email Tip or talk to her through Facebook or any of her zillion ways. Right, mm -hmm. Yep. People email or talk to me on Facebook and then I got a lot of people that um, use uh, Facebook Messenger. All right, so again, I'm going to do that same thing. I'm going to fold this one out of the way to make sure that this piece is flat. And I'm going to lay this one right over it. And I can actually just take my finger and put a little crease right here in the fabric, right at that edge where I want my needle to go down. So I know you guys can't see it, but there is now a crease right there. I can see it. What? Mary wants to know, do you trim the quilt top after folding it, or do you charge extra for that? I just trim them because most people don't have a big enough space. I don't really charge extra. I should. Other people do, but I don't. I just trim it for you. If you want it trimmed, you let me know. If you don't, some people trim their quilts differently. Like some, a lot of people have done. Uh, what is it called? Um, uh, sorry, my foot itches. I need to scratch my foot. It's okay. Uh, rounded edges. Oh my God! You guys know what I'm talking about. I have to take my sock off to scratch my foot. Oh. <laughs> Do you guys ever get those itches that just don't quit? Oh, that's what I have right now on my foot. Okay. Um, scalloped borders. Uh, some people that ha want to scallop their borders, they don't want me to trim their quilts. Yep. So, Mary said it right as you said scallop. Yeah, I had to think about it for a second in my own brain. But yeah. Um, but yes, I do trim for people. Uh, but I do charge extra for binding. Get a hold of her through Facebook or email. Yes, I do long arm for people. It's rare that I do, but I do. Yep, and if you want to join the Facebook group, join the Facebook group. is It's in the description. There's a link in the description of every single one of my videos. Even on the videos that have nothing to do with quilting, like when I shaved my cat and stuff, they... Have the links to all my stuff in the description. Karen says you broke up when you were talking about where you purchase online fabric. Oh, Marshall Dry Goods, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, Walmart. Walmart. Anywhere I can afford it because we're kind of broke. We're not kind of broke we are broke so when you're quilting on a budget it's best to just shop at the budget places i do buy from actual quilt shops though i support my local ones by buying thread at one and clearance fabric at the other <laughs> well, they're very pricey, <laughs> they're too, very so pricey so i buy my thread from them 
Oh, and I buy patterns from the other. Well, I haven't bought a pattern in a long time, but I do buy patterns from my local. And I do support Etsy shops. I buy on Etsy or I buy on Facebook Marketplace. Um, because some people, like just recently, this uh, past week, did that Black Friday thing and they were getting some. There was one lady who had jelly rolls for $17, which is cheaper than Tuesday morning's jelly rolls. So, I wanted to buy some, but we don't have the money right now because of car insurance. But. Yeah, we'll get back to you after the holidays. Money's a little tight right now. Yes, yeah. Leona, we understand. There's no here. All right, here we go. So, I'm down at this one again. I'm going to just show you. There's that piece that came out. It's kind of ripping out now because of the weight of things. But it comes out. I'm going to stop right at it. But I have finger to just put a little crease of where I'm supposed to stop. Just using my nail to push down. You can use a pen or a marker or whatever. But... Now they should both be meeting. Ah, oh, see that one. It's this side that didn't go all the way. So I'm going to pull that out of the way. I'm going to fix all four sides now while I'm at it before I press. I'm going to check all of my corners. This one and stitch up. I don't do mitered borders enough. I should start doing them more often and this would be a lot more better. A lot better. Not a lot more better. A lot better. Pull a stitch out right there. There we go. Much better. Come on. Stay. There we go. One stitch up. That's all I need. One stitch. Oh. Other side just ripped. Just one stitch. <laughs> just one stitch, and I ripped it already because I don't normally do this. It's okay. It's okay. Did it go one stitch up? It better have. Yes. Now we need to take this one and tack it back down because I took the seam ripper to it like a dummy. Kathy says your quilt is beautiful, Tiffany. I love it. I have to go right now. Have a great night, everyone. Stay safe. You too, Kathy. Take care. Every time I open it, it opens the other side. I'm not even going to worry about it. We're going to do this my way. Dan says, Tiff, you have so many two and a half strips to make your jelly rolls. Yep. <laughs> I make my own. I don't really buy them anymore. Yeah, that's what she's saying. Yeah. You have so many two and a half strips. All right, here we go. We're going to do this mitering thing. But first, we're going to press. So I'm just going to leave you guys over here, all the way over here. And we're going to turn you to the ironing board. Can you see it? You're just going to see me. How about that for now? Just chat with me. And I'll just look over to the camera. For now, I'm going to lay this right here. And I'm going to press or, towards... Uh, the ironing board and you and everything's a camera. I'm going to press towards the black. Because I need it pressed. It still smells like starch from yesterday. <laughs> I think it smells good. I, I like starched smell. the whole top yesterday. That lavender whatever smell. I'm literally like on the edge here. <laughs> I see. They can see too in the video. Good. You okay. can see the whole thing. There's one side. I gotta do all four sides. How long have I been on? I couldn't tell you. Yeah. On your phone. Tan says I love the smell of starch. Yep, so do I. <laughs> I don't right now, but it's I'm just gonna to pretend I do just so that I can get this done. It smells really bothering here lately. Oops, I still have a pin right there. No wonder it was not hitting right. <laughs> down that side. What time did you come on, do you know? No. So I came on. Oh, it's only been on two hours. Oh, okay. Hi, Shirley. Shirley says hello. It's her first time on your channel. Oh, 
welcome. Welcome to all the newcomers. Don't forget to subscribe and like my videos and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'm trying to press. I'm showing mitered corners, borders, borders, corners, same thing right now. Mitered. I'm mitering. And not with a saw. <laughs> well, I said earlier about bringing in a table saw, but we don't have a table saw or a miter saw, actually. Okay, so these two corners are perfect. Those other two were sloppy, sloppy. Sloppy, sloppy. This is the advantage of having a large <laughs> ironing board. Mary sees you changed your pants. She says, uh-oh, where did the turtles go? <laughs> I was sweating so bad. So I put really thin pants on and a thin short sleeve shirt so that I didn't have to smell my own stench. I even you took shower. I even took a shower <laughs> in between my first video and this video. <laughs> but I, I feel like that feeling I already need a shower again because I'm getting all hot and sweaty doing all this. Those of you that didn't see the first video today, yes, we had a big I conversation was, on this. I was talking about my stench, saying that you guys should be glad you're not hanging out with me in real life. But I get sweaty. Everybody gets sweaty. I just shouldn't have to say it out loud. <laughs> and Ann says, what turtle? I'm totally not private. <laughs> it's her turtle pants. She was wearing Ninja Turtle pants. <laughs> yes, I had my Ninja Turtle pants on earlier. All right, we're going to start with one corner, and I'll turn you guys in two seconds. Give me two seconds to turn you. Mary says you can't get by with anything in here. No. We're definitely crazy people. Crazy, crazy people. Plus, we're having fun, so. All right, here's the part that everybody gets confused on, and I'm going to take you off the tripod. We're moving. We're moving, and we're going to come. I to sorry, explain Brenda, the part that. Nope. that everybody gets confused on. So you can see I have quite a bit hanging. Well, not quite a bit, but I, I made myself have enough hang on the top and the bottom, right? Also, touching, okay? I did ask her your nice. question. What, she, what's the question? The Daniela block or whatever with the strip tube ruler. Yeah, she I've never... the strip tube ruler, but yeah. I don't know what she about a strip yeah. tube ruler. Yeah. The lady that did the strip tube ruler is da Daniela Stack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have the strip tube rulers. Right, here we go. We are going to fold this back and create a 45 degree angle. You see that? Look at that. This touches and that touches. This is what we're going to be creating here. If I can get all this to go bye bye. What I do, and to make this so easy, is I make sure that this is lying flat right here, just like that. The one piece only, okay? One piece, one piece. And this is the simplest way I can explain this to you guys. Some of you are gonna be like, oh my goodness, no, 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 don't do that. What I do is that part where I have those two quarter inch seams touching right here in this little quarter inch corner, right there, see that? Those are touching and every time I move it, it messes it up. We're gonna lay that flat again. Nice and flat. I'm going to come to this corner right there at that quarter of an inch. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to line this up straight and I'm going to line this up straight. And this ruler is not long enough for that. Let me get another one. Totally not long enough. Some people fold the whole entire thing in half. Okay, so there's a bazillion ways to do this. I'm going to show you real quick the bazillion ways. You can start by the ruler method. This. Um, no, no, yes, right there. 45 degree angle, right here mm -hmm. at the point where these two pieces come together, I would lay the, this on here and this along the top of here. And then I would draw a line and or you can move it over a quarter inch, putting your quarter inch line on your ruler. This is the second way to do it. Quarter inch line on the ruler, lined up with your quarter inch hooked two pieces right there with that so then you would put the quarter inch line up here i'm hoping that we're completely in the camera and then this quarter inch line right here and that line right there straight and then just cut away 
That's the easiest way to do it. And then you're going to hook them together with a seam. Then the way you're going to take this whole thing right here and fold one side on top of the other. This is the way everybody does it that I've seen. They fold one side on top of the other, lining both of these up, up along this side and creating a, a 45 degree cut angle on this side. Actually, this would probably be the fastest way. Then take your ruler again, a 45 degree line right here along the top. And you also line along the quilt, this right here. And then you draw a line. We're gonna make sure that stays nice. Lift that up, stay, stay, stay. Everything's nice and flat. Line the 45, one do I. See, this is why I can't do some of these things to show you guys how it works. Give me two seconds. I do not have a wall there. You take a marking utensil. In my case, there you go, there's that. That's lined up there. This is lined up here. You would take your marking utensil, draw across this whole entire thing like that. See that mark? And then I would sew on that line. You would pin both sides of this together and sew on that line. You know what makes this easier? Is if instead of sewing on the line, you just go ahead and cut over. We're gonna do this my way. <laughs> We're gonna do this my way. So this is gonna be one. We're gonna line, line back up, line this line back up, quarter inch away from that wonderful line that I just drew right there, right there. Everything's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. We're gonna take this. I know you're saying, no, don't do it, don't do it. Trust me, it'll work. Tiffany, have you heard of the Danielle block? No. No, she hasn't. No. Nope. I asked her, I did. I have no idea what it is. Now I'm going to throw some pins in it so that it stays. Throw some pins in this so that it stays nice. Just lots of pins all over the place because <laughs> I can. If you're in the Facebook group, Brenda, you can send pictures of it. You people all right. will know or see it then. We're going to call the machine and it's going to be really moving camera, moving camera. You're going to see what I'm going to do here. Cut that edge off. So we're going to ways to do this so this is the first way things already cut off ready to go i'm gonna move everything out of my way i'm gonna bring this over here and just so i would normally so and i'm also sure that this seam and that seam nest because i have seams in mine and i didn't think of that before starting this camera I'm also going to make sure that these two seams nest right here. What is the playback? On this video? Right now, is someone asking that? Because yeah. I have no idea. Okay, I don't know. I have the phone set up to record. And, um, but I have no idea. All right, let's take my 150 bazillion pins out. So this is one way. This is my way. This is easiest way. Um, just need to get rid of that. So I pre-cut it off, and when I open this up, my black should not right there, right there, and my little corner. So let me press this corner so you guys can see what it looks like. Hold on, two seconds. It takes me a second to press. So many seams right there. Mary says a T might know about the Daniela block. Yeah, I don't know. I've never heard of it. You might be familiar with it. All right, so here's one corner. We're gonna lay this. Yeah, I'm gonna lay this on the table so you guys. Little blue piece right here of the fabric, so it looks black, but it's really not black. It's from the other piece. So there is. Let's focus, focus, focus. There's a miter. Now, if you look closely, look closely. That is a blue piece right here where my finger's poning. So the blacks match up from nesting those two seams. 
None of these matched because none of these were lined up to match. And then the black matches right here. And then it comes to the end right here. But this piece is also black with white on it. So there's mitered corner number one. Yeah, it's not a screw up up there. That's a blue she piece. She sews strips together and uses a strip tube ruler. I use a strip tube ruler all the time. I didn't know there's a specific block, though, out of it. I make all sorts of different stuff with my strip tube ruler. All right. Laura says that looks amazing. So there's one. Now let's do another one the other way that I was starting to tell you. So let's bring Deborah up another says, one. Beautiful, Virgie says, the way your quilt turned out. So we're going to bring over one. Judy says, we're going to line these two up. She says, strips together and use it. Yep, we already talked about that. Jim says, mitered corners look so good. Mm -hmm. Fold that down. So again, I can do this way now, where I do one strip at a time. This way takes longer, but we're going to see if it comes out just the same. Thank you, Sharon. Hopefully that answered your question there. I'm going to line up my 45 degree line right here. And I'm going to line up my quarter inch line with that corner right here. Everything's lined up, lined up, lined up. Lined up. This is why we do both of them together. But we're going to do one. And then, oh no, I can't because of this cutter. Never mind. We are going to do both together. Screw it. Yeah. We'll do the drawn line cut way, where you draw the line and then sew on it and then cut it. Okay. Which one's your favorite way? The one you did the first? The one I just did right now. Okay. Cutting it, then sewing it. But Jim we're says gonna that looks good. Way. Screw it. We're going to do this now. Diane says, awesome, Tiff. The yeah. other is how I do it. We're going to draw it. Lining it up on the edge. I'm going to find my 4-5, lining it up on that. My camera frame. Now I am. All right, let's do this again. Line up the top edge. They're all lined up. Everything is lined up. See, look at that. Lined up, lined up nicely, lined up nicely. Lay it on here. 45 degree angle here. The rest of these I'm going to do my way, though, and just cut them first. We're going to line up this whole side right here and draw a line. And hope that I can even see it to draw on it or to sew on it. Billy says you make it look so easy. We're going to use friction. Friction pin does not work very well on black. Did I ever tell you that? I'm going to draw this dumb line. I can't even see it. The white doesn't show up on the black? No, but I can draw the white on top and the red shows up. Interesting. <gasps> yeah. All right. Learn something new every Now, day. a bunch of pins. So this is the sew it, then cut it way. So let's put a bunch of pins in here. I'm also, the sucky part is I'm going to have to nest the seam now. So we're going to pull that down. Nest that seam. Throw a pin in it. Just like that. We're going to nest this other seam because I have minus more than one border. Right. I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel it. Could you right there. The <laughs> no, the seam. I'm trying oh. to nest them together. And let's throw a couple more pins in here. Most people pin both sides. I don't bother this. I just pin the one side. There we go. Look at all those pins. 500 of them are needed for this. <laughs> That's why you don't like this way. That's why I don't like pinning. I just do my own thing. All right, so let's take this over. Now we're going to sew on that draw line. This requires me to move my magnetic thing out of the way, lining everything up. Oops. Am I going to stitch on that line? Not very good with stitching on the line. And we also want to stitch right up to my needle. Pull that out. Stay on the line. This means I have to follow directions by stitching on a line. I'm going to make sure that's seen. <laughs> Tiff doesn't like follow directions. No, no, no. Oh, see, this one's going to be a messed up side. I just know it. And now, I forgot to tell you the last time, we don't stitch off the edge. We stitch right up to where those two seams, see this 
square right here. We're going to stitch right up to that pin point, which I can feel with my fingers. Okay. And now, before you do anything, before you cut anything away, remove the pins one side. Then you would check it and go, that lines up, that's lined up, that lined up, and then take it over to the board and cut an extra quarter of an inch of seam away. So let's do that. I'd rather just cut in advance. It's so much smoother. But that's okay. Let me just do it all the other ways <laughs> so that you guys can see there's well, you're teaching her. <laughs> many ways to do this. All right, where is that? I can't even see that pink line. This pink line. She says, I like the pin for accuracy, but I always wind up being stabbed. <laughs> okay. So now I have what gone. kind of machine quilting thread do you use when you quilt a quilt? When I quilt a quilt, I use glide. Oh, I'm very partial to using glide. Okay, that seam fits better. That's that. on the long arm when you're actually quilting. Yes, right? the long okay. arm I use glide. So I'm going to press this quick and then I'll come back and show you this corner. Can we press it? Cut so afterwards. you can stay sitting and talking? Oh, no, that's fine. You yes, sure? I have to do this a certain way. So, okay. And I've never taught you this yet. So. Oh, my. All right. Okay. Stay, stay, stay. <laughs> Ricky says to Jim, I usually draw blood also. Lots of steam, lots of steam. Everything's nice and steamed up. Okay, here is my big corner number two. two. Quilting. After sewing on the Good. number two. Let's let it focus, let it focus. Look at that, it's perfect. You're right on, perfect. Perfect. Yeah, they're not as perfect as the other one was. This one I could see because this is a black piece right here that this came down just a little bit because I was nest. I, I like to nest them after the cut. So cut it, then nest it type thing seems to work easier. But for now, this is how it's going to go. Deborah says, so pretty. So there's miter corner two. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish the other two now. You guys can see sewing and cutting. So pretty. Okay, is. so it now you're just going to see sewing and cutting and probably the top of my head, but who cares. Alright, so those are two corners. Let's do two more. We're going to do it my way, but we'll just cut it off in advance. <laughs> it says blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. Very Earlier was this wet. This time I'm going to get, I'm going to notice blood parts of my fingers from these darn pins by later. Limit it. So this is the part with the this quilt that's getting the blood, and earlier the quilt got the sweat. <laughs> Mary says gorgeous. And, uh, Shirley says nice. very nice, Anthony. All right, so we're gonna do my way by just line up that darn forty-five degree quilt in your table and or whatever. You know that problem typically people run into. That's what I'm saying. Do you need a hand? No. All right, so we're gonna. Line it up, everything's lined up. It's on quarter inch, quarter inch. That's straight, that's straight. Everything looks straight. Our 45 degree line is perfect, perfect. Oops, back it up again. Right there, right there, right there. We're gonna go ahead, cut that away. Now, thin pin. Don't oh. fall, don't fall. The pin now, just a cup. Just a couple because I need to flip those seams. I'm gonna bring it over to the machine. So my quarter inch, which I need my wonderful little guide back because I kill a quarter inch seam for the life of me without a guide. Exactly, <laughs> Jim. It's all work in the end. <laughs> my head is not in the way. Hopefully. No, you're good. Oh, okay. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and nest this one. Except I'm gonna cut away that X now. Where is my snipper? It's all blurry. Is it blurry on you? It's blurry over here. I can't tell because I'm underneath the camera, not in front of it. Okay. And we're going to come right to that corner. Oops, stay down. Right there. Take this out. Check. 
lined up perfectly. There's a seam right there because that was the last of the last one, but that's okay. And that lines up too. All right, so let me press this and go on to the next. I still have to choose a fabric for the last border. Seam seems to be wanting to go that way, so we're gonna press it. You're gonna do one more border? Yep, one more border. Goodness, how big are you making it? Twinks. Oh, twin. Mm -hmm. Purple, red. All right, Green. here it is, yeah, right good. there. There's that one, right? More to do. I'm just gonna hurry up and do it, and we'll fold up the whole entire thing. Yellow, it's got green in it. Yeah, I'm buffering the... here. It's buffering, huh? Is it working over there? Yep, it's working right there. Yeah. You shouldn't be buffering. I mean, this is good on this screen. It probably is doing it off. Lining up, lining up, lining up. Everything's good. That's all good. Yep, Jim is. Jim, sorry. Lining up, lining up, lining up. Everything's good. That's all good. Yep, Jim is. 45 there, 45 there. Throw some pins in. So you guys see how much I can just do it. I've done this so many times. I do like first, second, or third borders of a mitered border on some quilts that I do. So, um, sometimes I hook together like this and just do all the borders mitered at once. All right, and then I'm just nesting those two. And then I'm coming right up to my end. my pins out open it up and look and sometimes here's a, a good corner to see see right here how it kind of pinched because I went a stitch over once you press it it'll press out but see it kind of lifted a little so I gave it a little funky crease that is okay 100% okay um, that's just because I went a stitch too far on the edge. So I'm going to press this and we're going to hold it up for you guys. Oh my goodness. I'm getting tangled in my quilt. Bourbon. Hello everybody that's joining. I still have one more border so you guys can for just a little bit longer. Lots of steam. Lots of steam. That usually cleans up the problem. Put more water in there. I can do that. Nope. Oh. All right. Oh, am I holding it? All right. Grab that side, this side. I got your camera for them. Oh, yeah, that was helpful. All right, we're gonna come right here. Turn you guys up some. And you guys get to stare, Scotty. I'm buffering, so I don't know. What's going on. This is not buffering. So here you go. I'm gonna hold this up again so that you can see the mitered borders. In it as a whole, our mighty internet. Okay. Okay, so let's hold it down some, down some, down some right there. I'm trying to hold the edge so you can see. Walk the towards your way more. Walk that way. There we go. Can you see it in this other screen? The other screen's two minutes behind. I'm barely there. So there's border one mitered. Hi, Dan. All right, fold it in half like this, come down like this. And hold the bottom half up like that. Let's pull tight toward you. You still have one more corner to do it. No, it's fine. No, oh. they're all four done. Oh. All four corners are done. Okay. So now I just need to add another border. You're getting pretty. It's gorgeous. Looks great. All right, I have no idea how big it is at this point. Vicky's lower back and legs are giving her hell. Brenda but says hi. hi Brenda. I'm, in, I'm in one of those modes too now. So we're going to see how big this is. <laughs> Suburban says that's awesome and I'm picky. <laughs> okay. June says very pretty. Diane says that's beautiful. All right. We're going to measure this now. We're going to measure it my way. Measuring tape from the garage. I go right here. Go to that end. What is it? Uh, four foot one inch is pretty much exact. Forty nine, right on. What's forty nine plus forty nine? <laughs> Do you not know? 
98. 98. <laughs> I know, I'm just fucking, I mean, screwing. Sorry, I told you guys I have a gutter mouth. Okay, so what is that? 98 by... Ray Jean says awesome. Diane says it's so beautiful. Hold on, we're going to see what this is. Brenda says love it. Heather says very nice. 98 by whatever this is. So that's the length, most likely, the 98, because that's what I kind of said it would be with just one. Ah! All right, there's the end. Mm, close to 42 here. So 41 and 7 eighths. So it's 84 by 98 right now. 84, 98, 84, 98. Hold on, let me write this down. 84, 98. Oh, look at that. I guessed it was going to be 80. Okay. So now, to turn you guys to my whole entire room, and you can watch me. Awesome. I'm going to go over that way, and I'm going to choose a fabric. So I'm totally going to choose something random that all these... I know it seems big Everybody already. Everybody wants to know if this is your own design. But I want it to go... Is this a pattern? Nope, this is my own thing. This is my ultimate scraps quilt. Ultimate strings. 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 Yeah. See, Same I even scraps. know. Ultimate strings quilt. Scott knows what you're doing when you're gonna get something funky that goes with all of that, but also goes with black. Now you guys know why I don't choose this fabric often because this is all really choices that I have. How about? Something lighter, huh? What do you think? Lighter, like a white mix? Oh, I said dark colors earlier, but okay. Buttons. Buttons. No. End it with buttons. No. No? No. Scotty likes to choose fabrics, too. I help. I do my best. You often don't like what I pick, but I try. Fine. I'm going back this way. Why? This is how I shop, guys, you for a video. Help. Video you shopping. You have to help me too. Uh, it's not just me. I like this blue with feathers. This blue with feathers. I don't know if there's enough of it. I like that. No, not enough. Well, it's fine. Mm -hmm. How about black with stars? No, too much black. Too much black then. How about snowman? <laughs> Nope, no snowman. It's a joke. I didn't actually want that. I know you guys are probably like, why are you putting on another border? Well, because I need it bigger. With I this. want it to hang. I have two mattresses on my bed, so it needs to hang far. I need a good overhang. Would this brown look good? How about... Or dragonflies? Uh, I don't know. Maybe dragonflies would. How about I end it with stars? No, dragonflies look stupid. Mm. How about I end it with Picky. stars? This is what you gave me. This is all I got to look at here. Stars? Stars. stars. I don't know what they're saying. I don't, I don't have know the what tablet. you guys are saying. I don't have the tablet, so I don't know what they're How saying. How about, let's see, what's this one? Mm, not that one. Ooh, how about this one? Virgie says very inches? cool. Jim says scrap buster. I only have 34 inches. That's not going to be enough, but that was like the perfect one. Mm. Mm. Ow! Oops. My favorite color is purple. So I'm going to find a purple. I said earlier purple would look good. Didn't agree. Purple. Or another purple. Oh, this one has black in it. Yeah. We're going to come to you with some choices. Here we go. I'm going to bring the camera down. We have our. Nobody's saying anything. This. So I don't know. Maybe they can't see it. Well, I'm going to turn the camera down for you guys. We have this choice. Or this choice. And Scotty had a choice, but he already put it away. Because you didn't like them. You made fun I of don't think it stuff. looks right. Here's my choices. You only gave Purple. me a look at here. So it has like swirlies. So if I was to have holding it 
just like that, you could see. Or we have stars. If I hold it. No. Because then I'd have to miter those borders too. Because it's it's a stripe. Oh. They have to meet up somehow. Oh. Or this purple with leaves. Okay, that makes sense actually. Oh, bunnies and hearts. That's cute. No, we had that. So those are the three choices. So far, I see top one. From far away, the top one reads as a solid purple. The middle one does not read as stars from far away. It just reads blotches. <laughs> and the bottom one reads as a swirly. Top one. Leaves. Top one. The purple is better. The sea stars are dull. That works against the quilt. We got purple with leaves, purple top. Everyone's saying the top one. I like the bottom. The top looks better. Okay, let me see how much I have on that real quick. Let's right. leave you guys right here. Are they meaning top is in there? The yeah, they mean the, the purple with the leaves. Because okay. it reads as a purple. How much is on here? Ooh, it doesn't look like a lot. That's okay. As long as it's the yard. And it's more than a yard, so yay, there's enough. Stand back and squint and you will know which one, says Mary. Hold on, let me pull these pins out. And we're going to put those over here. And we're going to move this out of the way. Kathleen says do... they're really dependent on how wide. Brenda says I'm purple thinking... with the leaves. Debbie says the top one. Hold on. Now put the quilt on top of it. About that little bit, about four inches wide. Like that. Goodness gracious. You're I'm thinking about four inches wide. So there's that one. It's not clear on here. They couldn't tell anyway on mine on the tablet here. It's clear here. Okay. So there's one. This is how we audition, guys. We got lots of lovets already. So let's audition another one real quick you just do, so I that you can see. Love. I got one love it. All right, so just to see real quickly, like, we're going to open one of these up. You don't have to open it all the way. Let's no. Give it purple. Now we're going to lay that on top with about four inches out. Right about, oops, further out. Just like that, right there. You're Pretend getting love it, yes. So then there's Thanks this the one. The colors really pop. My painting teacher taught me. Oh, it's the stand back and squint. Okay, so there's nice that one. one. Sorry, it's wiggle wobbling. I told you guys there's lots of wiggle wobbling. No, Brenda says no, no. Yeah, I think they like the other purple. Everyone said that one. And just because we're doing this whole fabric audition thing, we're going to add that third one real quick. Yeah. Just because. Deborah said boo. Linda said the first one. Okay. This well, one. I, think, I think the other one already won. Yeah, probably. Yeah. There we go. And there's the last one with the stars. First one, nope. Yeah, this definitely Worst does not look one, right to me. Not. Nope, nope, no. nope, nope, nope. Okay, first one it is. Let's cut some border. Okay. So I yeah. need, we're going to see, we 80. Uh, you want a yard, you said? No, I need more than a yard, is what oh, I said. I thought you said you Here, only need to cut a yard. Just place those over there for a second. I need. Yeah. 4 by 98, so I need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I need 9. We'll just cut 10 strips. Now we're going to divide this with some math. She yelled at me, Bergie. She wouldn't let me put mine out. She like We're going to do some math real quick. I have. Wait, come on. Stay. Six, forty-six, fifty-six inches here. So we're gonna do some math. I need the calculator off of that real quick. It's like the screen. I don't know how to do that, any of that. What did I just say? I don't know. You just want to get my 45, phone. Forty-five, fifty-five. I said fifty-five inches. Or you 56 get my phone? inches. Sorry. So we have fifty-six inches divided by four. Equals 14 cuts. What 
look at that app. All right, so we're going to cut four. Let's do times four and a half. We have 56 divided by 4.5 is 12 strips. Perfect. Okay, back to the video. There you go. Okay. Make sure it's working. Press the live button. Press the live chat. And there we go. All right. Here we go. I'm going to cut four and a half inches, and we're going to cut all this fabric up. Vicky says we're all winners. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and let's see. Good, 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 and good. Come on. Stay I already put mine away, Diane. Don't worry about it. He chose um, the uh, pink... Um, Dragonflies, which needs to be put back on the shelf properly because it's... It's on there. All right. It's better than yours, are All right, we're going to... So, ha. Huh. Turn this whole entire thing, because this is a right-handed cutter only. Fine on this side first. Line it up, lining it up. Everything's lined up. Okay, nice straight edge to work with. Right around, and now I'm going to cut a bunch of four and a half inch strips. Right there, there we go, right there. And it's in half, so I'm gonna get two strips per. Why does that not look straight? Not look straight. It does not look straight. What's the matter? Happen here? Hold on. That's why I don't cut that way. That's why I never turn my fabric. I leave it where it was. Now you guys, I don't move the fork around. I leave it where it was because it gets messed up when you turn it. Four and a half. All right. So I'm going to get one, well, two. Straight to me. I don't know. What it wasn't about. straight. This line was not straight up here. Oh. <laughs> okay. I'm going to decide where you're All right. Cutting. One, two. Three, four. Five, six. This whole quote will release the top. And eight and cut some more to make ten. We'll hook them all together and start going the quilt. The rest is gonna go in scraps. And then I'm going to cut all these salvages off at the same exact time. I'm going to do the same, make a super long strip trick where I make a super long strip and we just add and go. I've never had a problem with having bowing in my borders or anything like that because I know I've been asked that several times the way I attach my borders, but I've never really had a problem. I don't cut to size unless it's like a specialty quilt and then I'll cut to size. Um, of the top, but this way, this is not anything special, so let's do it like that. And just lining up all the salvages to cut them all off at the same time. I didn't even press anything, so I do have some funky edges that need to be folded down. Maybe I should press that piece. <laughs> it's been folded on the shelf for a very long time. Try that again. Hey, did you guys know this is cotton? <laughs> cotton. Every single one of these over and over and over is cotton. Cotton. It's just little pieces that say cotton. I have not seen what the name of this brand is or anything yet. Just keep seeing all these little cotton. They're all cotton. Did you know that? Did you somehow turn this thing off? I mean, nobody said anything. Uh, then you're going to have to refresh it because, yeah. I guess my chats aren't working. Hold on. Bring it over here. I don't know anything. I have no idea because I can't see. No one said anything. Yeah, then it.
probably needs to be reset. Hold on, guys. We're trying to reset Scotty's screen because it got messed up. There we go. Oh, no, it's still the same. So no oh, okay. okay. All these are now get pieced together into one super duper long strip. Super duper long strip. Yep, super duper long strip. Out of the way. And you guys are behind me, so you can see. I'm gonna take this bottom piece, fling it out of the way. So that means the piece and the next piece are right sides together. Look at that. Again, I'm still using this black thread because there's no point in changing it out. It don't really matter. It's dark fabric. Very good. Deborah just says we're just watching. Okay, good. That's because I've been on for so long. I'm keeping you guys past your bedtime, ain't I? But we're gonna get this on here tonight because. Yes, yeah, so it looks like now. here it looks like now. we're only going to get two videos today with how long I've been on here because I haven't even had dinner yet. Now it's almost seven. Yeah. Four, three hours. All right. Yep, I've been on for quite some time now. You guys had enough of me yet? <laughs> Jim says, "Don't want to miss anything by chance." The next two. I love the, the, when I started doing this, I was like, oh my goodness, this is the easiest way to put together one consistently long piece instead of putting it on your lap and then grabbing the next piece and then putting it on your lap and then getting the next piece and then having to open them up, put them right sides together when this way, you just take the next two pieces and they're already right sides together. Sometimes you have to align them. Sometimes they're already aligned if you stacked everything nicely. I'm not even going to press in between. I'm just going to go ahead and start sewing it onto the quilt. That's going to go pretty darn quick. All right. Oops. <laughs> no test now. Can't get tired of me. I haven't been on enough lately for anybody to get tired of me yet. Kim says, not tired of you, darling. <laughs> Stole my word. <laughs> That's because everybody's watching in anticipation to this quilt is going to finish looking like. So it's going to end up at a 92 and a quarter by 98, 99, 99, by, what did I just, uh, 106 and a quarter. So 90, what did I just say? 98 and a quarter. And a quarter, or 96 and a quarter by 106 and a quarter. Yeah, a quarter because this is a four and a half border and only a quarter of inches being sewn on. All right, so now I'm gonna take this whole entire thing, wherever the end is, find it, find it, find the end. Where is it? Hi. Oops, did I knock you guys? Suburban Here's my now, end. I usually go back and watch what I miss or him. Okay, so I'm going to take this whole entire pile and stick it next to the quilt top, and we're just going to start with one side. We'll swap the opposite side. I try to do top, bottom, then side, then side. But, unfortunately, I cannot tell you what the top and bottom is at this, at this time. We're just going to guess. We're just going to guess that it's going on correctly. All right. Harry says never ever to. <laughs> All right, here we go. Line this up on the end. I'm gonna back stitch, and now I'm just gonna go on down. <laughs> Shirley says you are hereby designated an essential service. <laughs> <laughs> this blade before it gets hooked to something. Yeah, and that'd be smart. You end up cutting <sighs> yourself. It's not going to be myself. It's going to cut my quilt. I don't want to cut tip quilt. Oh, this is good. Awesome. I'm glad I decided to put one more border. So I will have to use 108 backing fabric when I make this, or when I quilt it. Do you have any idea what you're going to put on the back? 
Yeah, black, right there. All of that. No, I have one, two, three, four quilts that need to come off of what's there. Whatever's left should hopefully do this one. Yep, that's the last of that bolt. Jim says binding in black. I don't know yet. I might just use some scrap set for binding. <laughs> because this is a scrappy quilt, except for this. This is the only yardage I've used in this whole entire quilt besides the black, you know. Um, that I might, um, I have a whole entire tray filled with binding, leftover binding. If I pull out all the two and a quarters or two and a half leftovers, then this quilt will have scrappy binding. All right, we're going to come up to right here. You guys have seen how I've done this before. We're going to fold it onto itself, make a nice straight line, just like this. It doesn't come to the edge all the way, but that's okay because that's going to be says it works. caught in the seam. It works. I'm going to snip that off. We're going to snipe. Now we're going to go to. says definitely scrappy binding. Another edge. Yeah, so I have the idea. I have tons of extra binding. Some are solids, some are prints, some are just whatever they are. All right, let's do well, this she again. Likes right here. Keep it black for binding. It will set the whole quilt like a photo. Good. I could do whatever I want, but right now I'm not going to think about it because right now I have to quilt the stuff that's on the frame. <laughs> yeah. I have to quilt the quilt that's on the frame, which was going to be video three of today, but if you guys are tired of me, I might not come back with video three. I'm, I need to relax and finish the movie. I started watching Con Air with um, Scott. Early. I want to eat and watch the movie. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Am I gonna? I don't know. Because I want some long arming done, which is, uh, when I say my quilting room, hanging out in my quilting room, that consists of the garage. <laughs> and because it's not called hang out in Quilt and Tiffany's garage, it's hang out in her quilting room. So that's just the extended part of my quilting room. <laughs> And no, I did not press anything. I will press the whole entire thing when I'm finished. The only thing I'm going to press when I add the sides is I'll press a little bit of the top and bottom out. Judy says not that I've missed. Yeah. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you guys love watching videos. I'm fully on my table. I just fold it back, line it on itself and across here if, you know, if it lines up just right. Sometimes don't, but most of the time it does. Stick my scissors on my crease, cut it, it lands perfectly. Oops, stay right there. Back stitch. Now, this is how I the sides. Instead of taking it to the iron now, I just use my finger and or if you don't have fingernails and you have a press stick, I just press it back right here, just like that. Debbie's got a question for you. Yes. When are you going to show us how to do Tiffy bag number three? Um, so I designed the Alexa bag first, and then I totally like was going to work on the next size Tiffy bag with all the bells and whistles. But uh, I had customer ba a client bag to do that I did in a video, and then they wanted the size two, so that's why I did the size two. Size three is supposed to be more like it's going to be the same style, just bigger with more bells and whistles, probably the crossbody strap, and so on and so forth. 
I just have to get to it. So you guys are just going to have to hold your horses on that one because I've been bag making have a customer um, duffel bag that I need to do. We or gym bag, out. gym duffel bag. I'm designing it myself, so that one, it, you'll get to watch it live stream, obviously. But not to... I'm having a hard time with the measurement and the inserts that they want. And it's not like something I have to have done in the next fuck, uh, month or two or anything like that, so I'll get it done when I get it done, but... I just have to finish drawing it up and making sure that everything's going to line up right and stuff. It's, it's really hard to design a bag because that doesn't get done on a computer. That's just done by experience. But yeah, Tiffy Big Size 3 will be coming out as soon as I get to it. And then other bags. And then when I get a chance to alt alter the Alexa bag, that's going to be shown. And then I also have a Maxine to design. Like my bags are already pre-named because I have two girls. I know. I'm not going to make a Damon bag because men don't carry bags. <laughs> and I can't make a Cyrus bag because, okay, you again. Okay, duffel bag. Duffel bag. Gym bag, duffel bag, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it could be the just in. Yes. It because his name is spelt differently, yes. so it'd be like putting it in. Yes. Just in. I like it. It's good. <laughs> Colleen, good evening to both of us. Good Hello. Evening, How Welcome. Are you doing today? Welcome to other people that have joined but just aren't in the chat chat thingy my bobber. Woo, I hope that's enough. My head's in the way for a second. I hope this is gonna be enough because I cut ten strips, right? Oh no, on the calculator I just divided to see how many strips I can get out of that yardage. Oh. Okay. To make sure I had enough to do four and a half inch strips. So I'm gonna move this out of the way for a second. And then I'm going to show you guys again you can use a pressing stick like this. Push that out of the way. Make it nice and flat. I'm also going to take my snips right here because, well, I just don't need that. Is that your 212 pressing strip? Yes. It is from, um, took orders last month, I think, already, November for it. Well, I was just trying to hook T up and tell people that they can oh, yeah. buy one from her. They That's can all ask. I was getting at. I don't know yeah. when she'll be taking orders again for them. Just like we hooked Becca up the other night when we were talking about her. Well, we don't know if anyone actually purchased from there, but yeah. All right, let's go down. A bunch of people were asking her And I it. think I might have pins on the floor by the time I'm done because I just knocked it out. Well, you're about to have a marker on the floor. Your light pencil got knocked down. I don't mm -hmm. think that matters. Give me two seconds. I got to adjust here, and I'm also... Is there also... a certain spot where you put the white? It was right here. I could have done it. Again, I'm going to snip this right here. Oh, come on. That was a big one. I'm going to press this darn thing just right here. I didn't know that's what you were supposed to do with that end. Mm -hmm. I am also going to make sure that I have enough real quick. This big. Now you know why I don't cut it on sit down anymore because I don't have strong muscles anymore. I got baby muscles. All right, is that enough? Is that enough? Oh, it is good. Okay. Let's sew. All right, so I'm on the last side. I'm just going to continuously go down this side and then we'll press it and be done. Oh, wait a second. We got to add that last bobbin that we rolled. Good thing you have another one rolled, huh? Yep, I rolled two earlier. Okay, we're gonna finish this. That went up my nose. <laughs> it happens. All right, where were we? Right there. Let's snip this extra away. All right, here we go. Let's finish this. 
What is everybody having or have had for dinner? I need some ideas of what I'm going to have for dinner. You're going to get them all talking about food. Okay. I know. But it was like talked about earlier. You know, well, you know look, at, this is kind of cool. This is a light print that has leaves and and berries on it right here and this is a darker print leaves or whatever not berries but it kind of like looks like they go to just different you know whatever styles i guess same general idea Kim meatloaf and sweet potato mm, yum okay i'm gonna start by turning off this chicken salad and macaroni salad and then we're going to finger press and or i like your style diane diane and press. peanut butter and crackers Ooh, that would be something scotty would have yep, pretzels and crackers is him no more i do peanut butter and crackers. all right so now i'm right here and folded my edge and look at that i cut one too many strips Mary had Taco Villa. That was the whole player's ad to her son. It was yummy. Remember we were talking about that? The yeah. ads earlier? So I have one strip and a piece left. So there's the add to my little four and a half inch square bin. And let's cut. Like this. I'm not seeing anything. All right. Now I'm going to press it. And it you guys are going to see the finished result. All right. And we're going to come over here and press right here at the iron that has magically turned itself off because that's what irons do. We're bring this up right here because it's super large now. You should mind me, I could have turned it back on. Right? Super large and in charge. A very big quilt. And I'm going to have the boys try to come in and hold the whole thing up. Yeah, I'm going to try to see if CJ will come in and hold one side and Scott hold the other to hold the whole thing up and then I'll hold the camera not sitting down so that you Debbie guys can had, see. Debbie uh, had fried potatoes, burger, onions, and corn topped with cheese. Wow, that sounds really good. Yeah. Especially fried potatoes. I make a lot of fried potatoes. I yes, love fried potatoes. Do. I'm you a fried potato-aholic. Potato yes. We should do that uh, one of these nights. Yeah. We're running out of our uh, leftovers in the fridge. And we have a bunch of potatoes out the garage that need to get used. Really Even Jim says sounds good, Debbie. All right. So I'm just going to like quickly try to press this whole thing nice and flat. It's kind of hard to do when this iron doesn't stay hot for very long. Mm. Debbie says me too. We love them. They love fried potatoes. When, when we hold this up, you guys are going to see, I'm not going to wipe all these white threads off until I go to quilt this, honestly. <laughs> I never clean them completely until I quilt them. Then everything gets all cleaned up. It's okay. I do pull threads out of seams, though, while the iron is um, it's okay. heating back up. Rolling it back, rolling it back. Dan wanted to try pork chops, but I didn't have any. <laughs> that sounds good, actually. Pork chop. I like my deep fried, or not deep fried, but bread, breaded pork chops. The ones that I used to make, remember yes, those? Yes, I know. The really yummy ones. It takes a long time, but they're yeah. really good. Yes, I know. I don't cook much anymore, guys. I like the bag it says, when I learned to sew, I forgot to cook. Actually, it happened way before that. That happened long before then. All right, let's put 
suicide. You stopped now. cooking before you met me. Yeah, I got lazy. I mean, I cook, but I don't cook if that makes any sense. I don't wake up every day and start breakfast. I've done by far more cooking. Lunch or dinner or anything like that. Anything. And I just recently gave up. <laughs> you gave up long. <laughs> I'm just pressing, pressing this border towards the purple. It's so much easier to just, every time you add a border, to press those borders away from the next border, if that makes any sense, from the border away from the next. Ray Jean is thinking about mac and cheese. Oh, that's what I can have for dinner. So simple. Just throw it in the microwave. I have these little microwave cups that I like. They're organic mac and cheese. It gives me less of a stomach ache because I'm lactose intolerant. Alrighty. Diane says I'm a quilter, not a cop. I don't understand that. But okay. <laughs> oh, the quilting police about pressing? Is oh. that what we're talking about? Oh, okay. Does that wants to know what you're working on tonight? I am working talking. on my ultimate strings quilt. The ones that I made all those blocks that I was foundation paper piecing, all those so Sundays and mixed days that I was foundation paper piecing, all those blocks I made 60 of the on the diagonal ones and 90 of the straight up and downs, which ended up in my um, order. Just adding seam now. She meant to say a cook. She's a cook and not a cook. <laughs> yes, that is my wife. She's oh. a cook and not a cook. Yeah. Jim says fried potato with hamburger, onions, garlic, and eggs when done. And they call it dog food. <laughs> I like making my fried potatoes with um, fried hot dog and, and eggs. scrambled eggs. Yep. She yeah. fries the hot dog. In, in lots of butter. Fry the hot dog in lots of butter until it is like it would come off of a barbecue with some dark spots. And oh, it's so yummy. Yep. Tastes good too. And it could be any brand of hot dog. They all come out the same. The thicker the brand, the thicker the hot dog, the better. But. Okay. Woo! Woo! Alright, this is two more sides left to press. Do you want me to do it? No. Mm -hmm. No. It's waiting for this iron to heat back up is the problem. Well, you can't make fun of your iron. I'm not making fun of it, just saying that's when what's taking forever. When your fan sent it to you and it's awesome, it's the best iron we have. Yeah. See, I go and, like, when I'm quilting is when I get all these threads that ended up in seams. I get them, I pull them while I'm quilting on the long arm. Okay, one more side. And then we're going to have CJ come in here and hold it up. Actually, we can go to another room in the house if Scott will turn all the lights on. Yeah. That way I can hold it up in full. Hi, Linda. Linda just got, just got here. Go we'll turn the dining room light on and the living room light on and we'll hold it up in that area. Okay. That I held up Justin's for the kind picture. Like a master plan. And then we can just go for a walk in my house. The only time you will leave my quilting room is so that I can fold up a quilt. <laughs> it is warm out here because the iron, or in here because the iron is on. And it's. Come on, stay. All right. Gotta let it warm just a little bit more, and then we're gonna take a trip to the living room. Okay, friends? Okay. And then we're gonna have CJ hold it up. 
so get him ready. CJ, you ready? There, he's ready. All right. You're gonna walk your camera, right? Yeah, so in front of the black shelf, grab one of you on this end and one of you on the other. Okay, I got this one. You get the other. Oh, we're going this, this way? Up and down. Okay, yeah. then you get that in. All right, you take it out there. There you go. All right, guys, we're going to go through the house. Here, I'm going to face the camera on just so that you guys are looking at me while we take a trip in my house, which we're in my na my hallway now. Oh, my goodness. This thing is e ginormous. It's not just enormous. It's an e ginormous. <laughs> Walk towards the rocking chair more, Scott. Thank you, thank you. I didn't think you should have added the purple, honey. I think you made it too big. No, it's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, okay ready, guys? Check this thing out. It's e ginormous. Get it? Oh. <laughs> Here we go. I can't even fit the whole thing in the camera frame. There we go. Look at this. The ultimate strings. Ultimate strings. It's going to be so fun to quilt. So let's come up close. Keep holding it just for a few more minutes, boys. So we have the mitered corners. I'm going to come across the top. They're, they're struggling holding it up. It is quite heavy. No, it's not. It's not like your sail ones. Those ones are a lot heavier. Have the back or the back on it. Yeah. So it's not that heavy yet. To the bottom. It's more like holding your arms straight in the air. It's more worse. So it's definitely like 98 across by 106 down. I'm pretty sure. So there we go. We can measure it then. Okay. So Are you guys can... take it back Yeah, in? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's go back to my room. Hey, you guys got a tour of my room. <laughs> All right. We're going to come over here and sit down. You want it on the ironing board over here? Where do you want it? Oh, just right there. I'm, hey. I'm pretty sure after adding the four and a half inch um, thing, the last four and a half inch border to the 84 by 98, hmm. which made it eight more inches. So it's 106 and 94, 93, 92. 92 by 90, because that would be eight. Yeah. You're getting very pretty. You're getting turned out beautiful. Awesome. So beautiful, there it is. Awesome. Fabulous. It looks my, amazing. My fabulous thing. <laughs> Jim says amazing balls. Uh, the ultimate string quilt. Let me tell you guys. Oh see how many very strings nice. are in there? <laughs> Ray Jean says you picked the right material. Okay, hold on. Wait, we gotta we gotta pull this out. Lizette wants to know what Guess your what? quilt design plan is. I still have this many more strings to go. <laughs> Was it? Lizette wants to know what your quilt design plan is. Do you have one? What do you mean quilt design? Oh, what are for you going to quilt on, on the I top? Don't, I don't know. I'd probably just have fun with feathers or something. What are we making here? Feathers you, is my favorite thing to do. If you just put a back on it and a whatever batting, it's a blanket. If you actually go around the top and do something, it's a quilt. So she wants to know what your quilt design is. What's your quilt? I have no idea yet. Probably feathers because I like feathers. Feathers go with everything. How much does this sh quilt shrink up when quilting, Mary asked. When quilting, I have actually noticed this. I've put it on the frame. I keep my paper outside in the garage with me. It's just usually a piece of paper that looks like this where I write the size of the quilt on it. Oops, I just ripped that. But I'll write a size of the quilt. It gets stuck to the quilt, and then I put it in. Um, um, I put it on the frame. I quilt it, and by the time I take it off, it's usually about a half inch shorter on each side than it was when I first started. So I lose about a full inch in the quilting. That does not include washing the quilt afterwards. After washing it, I lose another inch all the way around. Um, I don't use lose too much more than an inch. Like some people say they lose a lot more than an inch when quilting or when after washing a quilt, you know. I haven't actually lost that much because 
I don't know if the fabrics that I buy are pre-shrunk or what. They don't really shrink that much, so. Well, thank you for a terrific day. Please do more, Shirley says. Okay. And Jim wants He's to know what you would sell a padded flat rate of your strings for. A padded flat rate. Um, I don't know. I'll have to get back to you on that one, Jim. Lizette says, have you ever done a feather tutorial? I'd love to see that. Yeah, I have. Yes. Yes, I have. I had to think about it. Yes, I've done it several times, actually. I just don't know the names of the videos. Mary says that's not much, talking about your string. Oh, yeah, that's not much, but it is a lot. Because I just made a humongous quilt out of what was in there when it was nice before I started tearing it all apart. You guys know that it was OCD flattened, like everything was laid in there really nicely. And then I just started digging and pulling and digging and pulling, and now it's a disaster. But <laughs> all those I, strings were in that bag. Heather says, I see more string quilts in the future. <laughs> yeah, probably. And crumb. I have a whole entire bag just like that of all crumbs. I need to get to doing some more crumbs. Kathleen says, are you going to make a tag like earlier and add it? Yeah, that'll be when the quilt is quilted. Yep, she tags all of her quilts. Yeah, I tag all of my quilts, and if it forgets to tag it, then I will autograph it, even if it's my own. Because <laughs> I have to put the date or whatever, so I'll remember, or else I won't remember. Even if I have videos, as all these videos are like evidence of when I made a quilt, even if I have the video, I totally go in my head, um, I think I did that in January, but I'm not sure. <laughs> So, all right. So I have a quilt on the frame that I need to get to. If I come back tonight, that's what we will be working on. But mm -hmm. I've been on for three and a half hours pretty much now. I need to eat, and I really want to finish watching Con Air, although I've seen it 100,000 times because my son Cyrus is named after Cyrus the Virus, mm -hmm. John Malkovich. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, his character is named after his character. So I love watching that movie. Don't ask me why, I just do. Anyway, so, yeah, I'm going to eat and finish my movie, and if it's not too late, then we'll have another day in the life of In the Long Arm. If not, you can area. do it tomorrow. If not, I can do it tomorrow, so. Hey, that, that. The cat decided he wanted to play with my cord. All right, well, I love you guys, and I thank you for hanging Kim out. Kim says, this. go eat, I have some downtime. Yeah, I'll give you guys some time to charge your devices. Um, if I don't come on, I'll post in the Facebook group. Uh, if, that, if I'm just overly whelmed with tiredness from eating, I'll post in the Facebook group. So if you're not a part of the Facebook group, it's in the description below. Please join that. Don't forget, if you're new to my channel, subscribe. It's down that way somewhere. As well as like my videos and share them with your quilty friends. And if you want, you don't have to, but it helps my videos get out there and more people see. So earlier today, I had two new subscribers. So let's see how it went today on my second video um other than that i'll see you guys in my next video whenever that may be i'm hoping for tonight love you guys bye bye everyone